Hello, everybody. I'm Argelfomp, and this is the 2019 Hi, Nancy Drew, Nancy Drew, Drew Games Mega Marathon. He or she lives, so I'm playing I game number 16, my The White Wolf of Icicle Creek. See, I keep it so this is uh, uh, the halfway point of the series, because there are I only uh, 32 be games the in the Nancy Drew anyway, series. So that's why I'm sort of doing this marathon, is because game number 33 is coming out, and yay, this series is returning. So this is a game where Nancy goes to Canada and she solves a mystery at a lodge. And Nancy is going to be everybody's maid and work for them. And we've got dangerous, dangerous wolves. Well, just one wolf. It's, it's dangerous. The White Wolf of Icicle Creek. It might destroy us, but I don't think it will. But it might. I don't know. I don't want to get eaten by a wolf. When Chantal told me you were just a young thing, well, I thought she was pulling my leg. But you're not much older than my little girl, Freddy. Well, if one of the people at the lodge is to blame for all those accidents, Chantal thinks somebody like me has a better chance of figuring out who it is than somebody more, you know, hard-nosed. Chantal has a bad habit of making up her mind without thinking things clear through. But no need for you to tell her I said that, of course. Is she still in Edmonton? Afraid so. Insurance company's given her and her lawyers a real hard time. Left running the lodge up to me. Which is why I'm not real crazy about the idea of having somebody new underfoot. Especially if something else happens. I won't be underfoot, Mr. Randall. And I may be young, but I'm no novice when it comes to solving mysteries. We're here, so you'll get to prove yourself soon enough. Ooh. I love how he starts things off by insulting his boss. He's you like, that? you're not much older than Freddy. Freddy is like 10 well, years old. Nancy's 18. Nancy's way older than Freddy. Nancy has finished puberty, Freddy has not started puberty. Come on, Ollie. Was anyone in the bunkhouse when it exploded? No, ma'am. Uh, everyone here at the lodge is accounted for. Oh, that's where Elsa and Becky had been living. Guess it was a good thing they quit after all. Elsa was my maid and Becky was my cook. Does the sheriff have any idea why the bunkhouse exploded? He said he'd know more after the lab was done running tests on the debris he'd collected. He did say the blast was pretty powerful. One of his deputies found the knob to the back door clear out on the highway. Oh, that does it. Nancy, you have to find out who or what is behind these incidents, and you have to do it fast. You sure you don't want to give your daddy a call? My dad runs a whole chain of resorts, Ollie. If you think I'm going to admit to him that I can't handle running just one, guess again. Besides... Nancy comes highly recommended, and I'm sure she's got a foolproof plan for getting to the bottom of this. Don't you, Nancy? Well, I was thinking that maybe I'd just be your new maid. You want to be my maid? That would give me access to everyone's room, and I could question people without making them overly suspicious. Oh, yeah! That's an excellent idea! All right, you're my new maid. In fact, you're my new cook, too! Your cook? Well, that way, Ollie can stop pretending he can even read a recipe, let alone follow one. You'll have even more excuses to talk to the guests, and I won't have to pay anyone. Why, well, I think that's a fine idea, ma'am. Now, we're not taking any more guests until this accident thing is cleared up. So I want both of you to make sure that the four guests we have are well taken care of. Especially that Olympic-caliber cross-country skier from Fredonia, Yanni Volstaya. The flair he brings to the lodge is just what I need to attract the European jet-setting crowd. I'm gonna be pretty busy trying to get rid of that wolf, Chantal. We heard it howl last night, just before the bunkhouse blew up. Well, do whatever you have to, Ollie. Oh, and Nancy, I want you to call this police detective I've hired as a consultant. I put his number on the phone there at the lodge. In fact, I think you know him. Tino Balducci? I gotta go. My lawyer's here. Good luck, you guys, and keep me posted. Coming! Tino Balducci! No! I'll get you a master key and leave it in your room. If you need anything else, I'll be in the basement. Not Tino. Yeah, so Nancy's solving the mystery, doing all the cleaning, all the cooking, and she's still not being paid. So, people are saying the volume is too low? Are you saying the voice volume? I can turn up the voice and the effects. I don't think we need maximum music, though. I think it always works with music a little bit lower than that. So, how does this volume sound? Does this sound good? Hopefully, this sounds good for everybody. This must be the key Ollie said he'd leave for me. 
And this must be a list of which guest is in what room. That'll come in handy. It certainly will. Aw, and there's Nancy's teddy bear. So let's see, I'm on junior mode, right? So I can That's check finished. things off my task list. Can't check that off, can't check that off yet. Oops, ha still need to do that. Check. I have to check everything. Okay, basically right now, because we've started, it says go around everybody's room, look at everything. That makes sense. Let's just start by going outside and uh, checking out the scene of the explosion. Why not? Uh oh, don't turn around, Nancy. So the scene of the explosion was not here. Was it I here? better not follow this trail until I know for sure where it goes. Okay, somebody's saying the music needs to be lower. Uh, the music needs to be a little bit lower. Here we go. This is the scene of the. Uh, this is the scene of. Huh. The explosion. Who uh, Nancy Drew? Nancy Drew shall not pass unless and until she proves herself worthy. And how does she do that? By hitting the snow princess ten times. Snowballs only, no ice balls. What are ice balls? Snowballs made of ice. If you get hit with one, it can knock you out. So don't throw it or I'll tell my dad. You must be Ollie's daughter, Freddy. I am the snow princess. Prepare to defend yourself. Yeah, too bad we can't just say, no, Freddy, I'm I'm walking past here. I'm not playing your silly little snow princess game. Ow. You have defeated the snow princess. You may pass. Yay, I can pass. Let's see, I the can look face at this. The clock, it's all melted. Part of the timing device that was used to trigger the bomb that blew up the bunkhouse, maybe? Very nice. And also at the lake, I think we can clean off the lake. Did I read my list of chores? I don't think I did. We'll, we'll see if I can, if I can uh, clean off the lake. Oh, nope. I can check out this area, though. I'm sorry, I had the lake confused with the other lake. Oh, a nice fishing ship. Me. A nice warm one at that. So we can go fishing. That's neat. Nice. Okay, I caught a fish. And I don't think there's anything else here right now. Yeah, definitely the wrong lake. Well, let's go downstairs and introduce ourselves to everyone anyway. are the stairs. I can't climb up those stairs. They were iced down and it hurt someone. Ah, here we go. The skating pond. Different than a lake, obviously. It's a pond. Nancy will just shove a fish in her pocket for the rest of the game. Really? Poor Nancy. Looks like somebody has their work cut out for them when it comes to shoveling off this pond. That's you, Nancy. That's you. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, Nancy doesn't know that's her job yet, so we're going to do it. I mean, we're going to go up, we're, we're going to read, uh, read about our jobs, I and feel introduce warmer ourselves already. to everyone. I think because we're on the first day of the game, Nancy gets a minor break. Oh, wait, 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 hold on a second. Skating, report all avalanches to the avalanche patrol. Those are all of Nancy's chores, so avalanches and everything. Nancy has so much work to do. Darn, I thought I would get a break because it's the first day of the game, but no! We have to do laundry. So let's clean up everyone's room. It'll be an excellent excuse to snoop. Let's see, he's got uh, a book about wolves. Snowshoes. He's got snowshoes. Art stuff. So this must be Lou, the art guy. Let's 
let's see, this is the snower. He's got a bunch of, uh, he's got snow magazines, basically. The skier, that's the speed skier. I was going to solve a mystery about a cool looking wolf, but no, I'm doing laundry instead. So this is Guadalupe's room. She has a magazine about Jan Ivokstaya, the, the champion skier. I refuse to lose. I will never lose. Ever. We're, um, this is Bill's room. He knows about structural engineering and machinery. Well, that's good for him, I suppose. Let's grab his laundry. And we've got everybody's laundry. Hooray! That, that wasn't too bad, was it? This must be where I drop the laundry bag after I'm done cleaning all the rooms. You have to do this every day for the rest of your life. No! Let's meet these characters. Uh, here's Guadalupe. Well, who are you? I'm Elsa's replacement. Oh, the new maid. Thank goodness. I was wondering how much longer the owner expected us to endure these conditions and still pay full price. No, it must be really awful not having somebody to pick up your dirty towels. I'm trying to learn everyone's name. My name is Guadalupe Comillo. My friends call me Lupe. My name is Nancy Drew. Two things, dear. First, the alarm clock is missing from my room. I don't necessarily need another one. I just don't want to be charged for that one, seeing as I have no idea where it went to. Second, be a doll and clean my room first. It'll hardly take you any time at all, especially compared to the other rooms. The other guests are all men. Single men. Well, I'm happy to report that I've already cleaned your room. Excellent. So somebody stole her alarm clock to build the bomb which blew up the, the bunkhouse. Or she's just trying to make it seem like somebody else did it. And what on earth is she doing? Yeah, Lupe does not like single men. She has a thing against them. They're dirty and messy and disgusting and doing their laundry takes forever. Because they just sit around spilling ketchup all over themselves and their clothes are a mess. I hate to sound nosy, but what are you doing? Birds. I'm watching birds. That's what I am, you see, a bird watcher. Sometimes I go outside and watch, and sometimes I stay inside. It all depends on what the birds feel like doing and what I feel like doing. So, all the rooms look equally messy, to be honest. The, uh, I don't think any room is messier than the others. And how is she looking through birds? I mean, you can barely see anything through this window. What kind of birds do you see here? In the short time I've been here, I've seen hawks, eagles, orioles, cardinals, jays, nothing truly rare. But to a wildlife lover such as myself, seeing them in such a spectacular setting is thrilling nonetheless. I know a bird watcher named Red Knot. You and he should get together sometime. Maybe have some coffee and talk about birds. Have you met the other guests? I've bumped into them at one time or another, yes. I don't spend all my time in front of this window. That Yanni fellow, he's very talented, but extremely intense. His whole life revolves around being the best in the world. As for the two who are always sitting across the way playing that silly game, the older man, Bill Kessler, he's no deep thinker, but he's nice enough. But the other one, that college student, talking to him is like trying to converse with a giant turnip. No social graces whatsoever. I almost prefer talking to the handyman. Almost. Anyone that intent on destroying something as glorious as that wolf is hardly worth talking to. Good luck with your birding. Au revoir. Yeah, Lupe and Red would be great. They could be great friends. They would force each other to do each other's chores all day long. Yep, yes they would. Okay, so we've got a lot of cool things. Um, some of these have been stolen. Young and old alike have stayed at Icicle Creek Lodge throughout its 100-year history. Hmm, looks like some of the pictures are missing. They are, the pictures are missing, and then this is locked up. Bone which Trapper Dan found near yet. the lodge. He believed it came from a race of giants known as Rexes. 
The bone's not there. I wonder what happened to it. Yep, the bone is gone. It's a giant teddy bear. I always wonder why they have a giant teddy bear just standing there, but teddy bears are cool, I guess. That is an evil glowing eye. That's that's not cool. That's scary, actually. And I believe we have a newspaper here. Food poisoning. Yeah, this is about the terrible stuff that's been happening here at, at the lodge. Sasquatch sightings hit five-year low. Well, I see him right there. There's Sasquatch. He's right there on the newspaper. So let's meet these guys. Well, hello there. You must be the new maid Ollie told us about. I'm Bill Kessler. This guy's Lou Talbot. Hey. What's your name again? Nancy. Nancy Drew. Just thought I'd come over and say hello. Well, Lou here's a grad student. Art major, of all things. You're probably gonna need a jackhammer and some hydrochloric acid to clean his room, eh? Yes, Ollie says he can run the hotel by himself, but people are just straight up stealing things from the displays and he hasn't noticed. Have you two been at the lodge for a while? About a week, I guess. I checked in right after he did. We sat down after breakfast one morning and discovered that this fox and geese game is pretty darn fun. I've been whipping his tail ever since. You didn't just come here to play games, did you? Heck no. I came for the ice fishing. Of course, knowing there's a renegade wolf running around is kind of dampened my enthusiasm. Have you seen the wolf? Just heard it. Every night since I've been here, in fact. Gets creepier each time. They should get rid of it, and the sooner the better. They didn't put up with wolves prowling around this place 40 years ago, and they shouldn't put up with them now. What are you, Little Red Riding Hood? That wolf's not hurting anybody. People should just leave it alone. You'll be singing a different tune when it has some little kid for breakfast, then has you for lunch. Not gonna happen, dude. Trust me, if something bad can happen, chances are it eventually will, dude. Hey, I know what you can do. Shovel the snow off the skating pond so we can do some speed skating. Lou here thinks he's faster than me. You're like ancient. Of course I'm faster than you. You may have youth on your side, my friend, but I've been working construction since before you were born, which means I am more fit now than you will ever be. Get that pond shoveled so we can settle this, okay, kiddo? Consider it done. Okay, so we just got a chore. Now we need to clean off the pond. We can do that. That's not so bad. This, 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 this is a puzzle we'll do much later on. I think if we try to do that puzzle early, it, the game gets mad and yells at us. So, uh, we don't need to go to Trapper Dance Needle quite yet. So here we go, let's clean off the pond. Guess I better get this pond shoveled off. This is a lot like Minesweeper. The color basically tells you how many holes there are in the ice. So I have a feeling so you see all these places, they say, I've got one hole next to me, one hole next to me, one hole next to me, one hole next to me. It's got to be right there. That's got to be where that singular hole is. Oh no, I found one of the holes. That was... That was bad. This sound effect, though, of shoveling. Oh my gosh. So we're going to have a hole here, and you can only accidentally click on so many holes before the game says you've messed up. You're off the case, Nancy. This looks like another case where a hole is right there. Luckily, we've got a lot of spaces which are just, which are just, uh, wide open here. I 
Yeah, it'd be kind of cool if Nancy went back to Canada. Canada's a really big place. There are other places in Canada she can go. Besides the, the frozen... Frozen parts. So it looks like these are two holes right there. Looks like so far all the holes are just uh, big circles. None of the holes were touching, besides these two, which were overlapping. But every one, every other hole was just all by itself, making that it ought very to do simple it. to solve Wait that puzzle. Wait a second, those look like wolf tracks. Maybe I should find out where they go. So Nancy finds wolf tracks. Hooray! Yeah, that that pond is very, very small. Not not enough room for speed That must skating. be Trapper Dan's needle. And check it out. We're at Trapper What's Dan's needle. What's this doing here? Strange. It's halfway in and halfway out. This thing must open up somehow. Yeah, so the wolf tracks lead over here. So let's follow the wolf tracks. They lead away from Trapper Dan's needle in this direction. Well, these are the tracks of a dangerous animal which has been causing problems. Let's follow them and see where they lead. Ah, Chicken Ridge. Sounds delicious. Sounded like an explosion. What's that noise? That's how Nancy died. The end! I'm buried in snow. I've got to dig myself out before I run out of air. I'll never make it. I can barely breathe. Someone's up there. Help! I'm down here! Right under you! Can you hear me? Help! I can't breathe! You heard me. Thank goodness. Easy. It's okay. I'm not real happy about the situation either. It's gone, but thanks to that hole it dug, I can breathe again. Now if I can just pull myself out. Well, that wolf is so cute. I mean, I, I know it's a wild animal and stuff like that, but it helped save Nancy's life, and it was Go just Go back to Chicken Ridge cute. and risk getting caught in another avalanche? I don't think so. Although, although, it, yeah, it, it was kind of unhappy about seeing Nancy. Well, then why did it save Nancy? In any case, we got to meet the wolf right off the bat. In some avalanches, yeah, in some games there's an avalanche, Nancy dies automatically. In this game, there's an avalanche, and the wolf helps her out. So I think this is an explosion. This must have been made by the explosion I heard. A fossil. Cool. Somebody made a fossil. Check it out. It's a cool fossil that was unearthed by the explosion. Well, maybe that's why somebody made the explosion. Um, they were trying to find fossils. And now I have to go back and make lunch. Oh no! Yeah, I wonder why the culprit um, didn't bother taking that particular fossil. I mean, like, I'm not trying to spoil the ending to the game, but somebody's going around trying to get fossils, and the person just left the fossil there for no apparent reason. Ah, much better. I was really cold. So let's see, we're gonna talk to um, Bill and Lou because I finished their pond. Oh, they're not here. Nobody's here. Okay, let's make uh, lunch. So lunch can be difficult. 
Yes, I order hamburgers or a quesadilla. Put the patty first. So let me see, this is a hamburger. With all the food. Um, here, I'll just cook up four hamburgers, just to start with. And I don't think there's anything special about the quesadillas, right? So let's try this out with the quesadillas. I'll just dump the hamburgers here. Wow, those quesadillas burn quickly. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm throwing away this quesadilla. What are you, Nancy? A cook or an arsonist? No, I... change? I think the orders just changed. Okay, let's just cook quesadillas to begin with. Or maybe the orders just switched locations. That could be it. So it's like Guadalupe launched just a quesadilla. And Lou launched just a quesadilla. Order up. Order up. Everybody else is just a hamburger. Okay, Bill wants just a quesadilla. So I'll just dump the four hamburgers on here. Come on, come on, there we go. We need to put the said we need to put the patties down before we put anything on top of them. Order up. So this person wanted cheese, lettuce, two cheese, two lettuce, a tomato, two onion. This isn't so bad. Then mustard and ketchup. Oh, if I if I get marked down for doing ketchup and mustard, then that's just not fair. We'll see. Order up. Oh, good. Okay. Woo. Oh, and I need to make paprika on, uh, just throw paprika on people's stuff. Okay. Everybody gets paprika. We'll see who likes paprika and who doesn't. So two cheese. One lettuce. I might be doing paprika early. If so, that would be very sad. So pickles, tomato, onion. Ketchup, and mustard. Order up! Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I didn't get in trouble for throwing, throwing uh, paprika on people's people's burgers, so that's good. Does Nancy not make food for herself? I don't know. Can we get, like, an extra cheeseburger for Joe? Make a cheeseburger for Joe, Joe Hardy? This ain't right. Ah, uh, oh well. <laughs> okay, one cheese. Uh, two lettuce, he said. Two pickles and one tomato. Onion and then a ketchup and a mustard. There's an awful lot of people I hear talking in the background, and there are not that many people here at White Wolf Lodge. Hooray! So we finished cooking everybody's food. Now maybe the men are back and we can trigger their next competition. Or they could just like not be here at all. Well then that in that case let's just go downstairs and meet Ollie. Maybe he'll have a chore for us to do. Oh, we, yeah, we have two characters to meet here. Nancy, I am glad to see you. Are you all right? You seem upset. You must listen. I was outside skiing very fast, as usual, and suddenly, boom, snow, dirt, rocks, everything went flying into the air right in front of me. There is a mad bomber on the loose. I know, I was almost attacked in the same thing. Did you see anyone? I saw no one, not before, not after. My competitors bombed the bunkhouse thinking I would be so frightened that I would abandon my training and leave. Only I wasn't frightened, so now they are trying to bomb me. 
Did Nancy eat the leftover cheeseburger? Yes, I think that's what happened. So he thinks that the culprit is uh, just one of his competitors trying to stop him from winning the skiing championships. Do you think they're responsible for all the accidents that have been happening around here as well? My competitors and the governments behind them, they are as desperate as they are ruthless. They are capable of anything. They can operate anywhere in the world, under all conditions. It would not surprise me if someone right here in the lodge is right now under their employ. But to them, I say, pa! They do not scare me. I am the best cross-country skier in the world. I will neutralize their petty threats with my excellent strength, skill, and speed. I am sorry. Enough about my problems. Did you want something? How did Yanni know Nancy's name? He just starts off by shouting, NANCY! Like, we haven't been formally introduced yet. And yeah, who is who is he going against? Who are his competitors? Is it Jacques Brunet from Treasure and Royal Tower? Are you are the two of you like skiing competitors? I hear that a major cross country skiing competition may be held in this area in a couple of years. This is very true. It will rival the Olympics. Yeah, so it's not the Olympics he's gonna be competing in, it's a, a different skiing competition. I also hear that you can be pretty imaginative when it comes to gaining an edge on your competition. I told you about the bomb. My competitors will stop at nothing to defeat me. I am forced to seek out and exploit every possible advantage open to me. I take no pride in some of the things I've done to bring victory to my country, but I have no choice. You're busy, so I'll let you go. It has been a pleasure. Well, at least it's kind of nice when talking to us. Kind of sometimes need something right okay i remember okay so the next tour we actually need to call the avalanche patrol every time there's an avalanche so there was an avalanche we need to talk to them about it i'm just trying to get the lay of the land or the lay of the lodge in this case well this is my workshop i'm building something that's going to solve all our problems a wolf trap one that'll finish off that thing out there once and for all you think the wolf is causing the accidents not a doubt in my mind Everything was A-OK -okay till it showed up and started howling. It's bad luck, and something's protecting it. Something unnatural. A ghost. Does Ms. Mawikwe know you're doing this? She knows she doesn't want that thing around her guests, and you heard her. I'm supposed to do whatever I think is necessary to get rid of it. But it's not like it's attacking people. Let me tell you something. Yesterday I went looking for it. I tracked it and finally found it, sitting across the creek not 20 yards away from me, just staring at me. So I raised my rifle, drew a bead, and fired. Easiest shot I've ever taken in my life. And I missed. So I fired again, and I missed, and then I missed again, and again, and all the while it just sat there staring until finally it just stood up, walked toward the brush just as calm as could be, and disappeared. Wild animals just don't act like that, and I just don't miss like that. There's something real weird about that wolf, and I ain't gonna rest till I get rid of it. So maybe we should just find something else to jaw about. You met my little girl yet? Freddy? Oh yeah, she's got a pretty mean arm on her. <laughs> she sure does. Of course, that little snow fort she built is pretty much her whole life. Just sits out there waiting for somebody to go by so she can pick a snowball fight with him. I keep asking her how she manages to stay warm all day, but she won't tell me. Says she's got a secret weapon. Yeah, she's something. This guy's kind of terrible. He's like, so I shot, and I missed, and I missed, and I fired again, and then I missed, and then I missed, and then I missed, and then I had a popsicle and took a nap, and then I fired again, and then I missed, and I missed. And he does not seem to really care that his daughter's outside in freezing weather. Oh, she says she'll be fine, but you have no reason to know that. Did you know there was an avalanche at Chicken Ridge? Sure didn't. Not surprised, though. You call the Avalanche Patrol? I thought I'd tell you about it first. You better give those employee instructions I left in your room another look. Reporting avalanches is part of your job. Can you tell me more about the accidents that have been happening around here? Nope, sure can. You can't or you don't want to? Chantal and those lawyers of hers said I couldn't talk about them. Supposed to direct all questions to her. Oh, Sorry. Oh, come on. Have you ever seen Trapper Dan's Needle? Of course. Ollie's eventually going to realize he is just terrible at, at using rifles. Do you know if there's a way to get into it? Don't know. Don't really care. Maybe something in that display up in the lobby will tell you what you want to know. I'll get out of your hair now. If you need anything, just holler. 
Yeah, and there's the sauna that's here in the corner. I'm just going to stand here and absorb the warmth. Ah, so much better. Yeah. So now maybe... Maybe... Oh, hey, wake huh? up! Oh! Hi! People who sleep during the day usually have a hard time sleeping at night, you know. I can sleep anytime, anywhere. That's what happens when you got a clear conscience. It uh, doesn't look like we can talk to him about the, uh, the Is this the first time yet. you've been to the lodge? Yep, sure is. Are you by any chance related to Rolf Kessler, the guy who used to build carousels around the turn of the last century? No idea. I'll let you get back to your nap. You want to talk? You know where to find me. Well, so much for that. Oh, I guess we could talk to Lupe again, but... For now, let's call the Avalanche Patrol, because they're going to give us a chore. Do I know the Avalanche Patrol's number? Yes, I do. So it should be 555-2006. Avalanche Patrol, what's your location? I'm calling from the Icicle Creek Lodge, but I wanted to report an avalanche at Chicken Ridge. Anyone injured or trapped? Uh, not anymore. We'll check it out. Thanks for the heads up. Hey, wait a minute. You know Ollie Randall? The handyman here at the lodge? He's also on the patrol. Do me a favor and tell him that the explosives training in Calgary has been postponed till next month. Explosives training? Sometimes the patrol has to use explosives to bring down unstable snow. Yearly training sessions are mandatory. Ollie will know what I'm talking about. I'll tell him. Appreciate it. One more thing. Have any of you guys been setting off explosives anywhere near the Icicle Creek Lodge recently? Nope, sure haven't. Well, thanks. Bye. Hmm. And uh, we can also look at the birds that are in this area. So you might have noticed that um, Chantal is lying about the birds that are in the area. That lying liar. What a liar. So we can confront her, and we'll talk to Ollie as well. Yes? Have you ever seen the wolf that's been hanging out around here? No. Uh, not that I'm looking for it, of course. Yanni occasionally skis by, and that dullard of a student, I see him snowshoeing occasionally. Uh, but I've yet to see the wolf. So Have you I seen said it? Chantal instead of Lupe. My mistake. Okay. Me? <laughs> I'm just the maid, remember? But I did find a bunch of tracks beyond the pond. You could try following them and maybe see the wolf that way. Maybe I will. Have you told anyone else what you just told me? No. Good. Don't. You see, I'd like to see this wolf for myself, and I don't want everyone else going after it and scaring it away. And there's no telling what that trigger-happy handyman might do. So it'll just be our little secret, all right? All right. I'll let you go. Ta-ta! Yeah, like, Nancy says, well, nobody's trapped anymore. No comment. The person isn't at all interested by it. I, I mean, wouldn't you want a follow-up question to that statement? What you need? The Avalanche Patrol asked me to tell you that the explosives training session in Calgary has been postponed till next month. Well, hallelujah. I didn't really want to go anywhere until I finished off that wolf. Now I won't have to. I think you were right about the wolf not being normal. Of course I'm right. Dang, I just remembered. Patrol wants me to keep an eye on Skookum Ridge for the next couple of weeks. Here, there's the key to the snowmobile. Take it out to Skookum Ridge and see if there's been an avalanche. You want me to check it out? Seat seated so you don't have to worry about the cold. Make sure you call the patrol and give them a report when you're done. You can handle that, can't you? You bet. Good. And two I more think things. That's it. Oh, that Bill Kessler guy oh, okay, is getting bored being the only one around here doing any ice fishing. He wants that's competition. That's what we have to do. So if he says anything to you, just remember that Chantal wants you to keep the guests we got happy. Other thing is, a cold snap's on its way. You think it's cold now? Just wait. Got to be real careful anytime you're outside. So, we done here? That's all the questions I had. See you later. So let's let's do both of these things. We need to talk to Bill and uh, go to Skookum Ridge. Nancy, 
Hey, got a proposition for you. Ever been ice fishing? As a matter of fact, I have. Excellent. Here's the deal. I need some competition, so I want you to go out there and try to catch a bigger fish than I caught yesterday, which means you gotta catch a two-foot northern pike. Now, it's a bit of a hike out to the lake, but the shack is solar heated, so it's nice and warm inside. So what do you say, kiddo? You game? Anything to make you guests happy. Atta girl. I've kept you awake long enough. Anytime you want to talk, just wake me up. I do wonder why he sleeps all day. That's just very strange. In any case, let's do both things. Let's talk to, uh, let's go to Skookum Ridge. Ah, let's go to Skookum Ridge and let's do the ice fishing. I can spin around, go forward, and then left. Just a very weird, weird request. It's like, hey, I need you to catch a two-foot northern pike. Why do you want this one fish? He woke up just to tell me to get him a fish. He's not going to eat the fish or anything, it's just he wants a fishing competition. <coughs> so this can be tough. You don't want to crash, otherwise Nancy dies. I am clearly doing poorly. Okay, did it. The sign's not buried, so I guess there hasn't been an avalanche. Yeah, the snowmen scream. I don't know who's making all of these snowmen out in the middle of nowhere, but yes, the snowmen scream when you hit them. Like this. <coughs> it's a very screamy snowman. It's a death sequence if you hit too many of these trees and rocks. You get fired. No! Oh! You crashed Ollie's snowmobile? Not only crashed it, I pretty much trashed it. I didn't mean to, but I guess I zigged when I should have zagged. My insurance company's not gonna like this one bit. For what it's worth, I'm not exactly thrilled about it either. Well, Nancy, can you guess what I'm about to say to you? Don't let it happen again. You're fired. Yeah, that was my second guess. Yeah, I got fired. Literally. The sign's and not buried, so I guess there hasn't been an avalanche. Yeah, she fired me from my job, and I literally got set on fire. It was not the best day of my life. So, Nancy, you crashed a snowmobile? You're off the case! If I'm this badly here in the warm up round. Oh, come on! You crashed Ollie's snowmobile? Not only crashed it, I pretty much trashed it. I didn't mean to, but I guess I zigged when I should have zagged. My insurance company's not gonna like this one bit. For what it's worth, I'm not exactly thrilled about it either. Well, Nancy, so close, can so you guess close what I'm about to, to, say to, to you? solving the puzzle. Don't let it happen again. And then You're I exploded. Fired. Yeah, that was my second guess. The sign's not buried, so I guess there hasn't been an avalanche. Well, let's get it this time. But yeah, the end game challenge is uh, a snowmobiling challenge. So this is just, uh, I think this segment is just to get you used to the idea of snowmobiling.
get it. Yeah, Nancy cannot light a bill and say, Oh, I caught a two-foot northern pike. I just, uh, just didn't, uh... I just threw it away without telling anybody. So this Come, is the way. By order of the Snow Princess, you shall not pass. This is the way to the lake. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. Just, just, uh, just Google Northern Pike pictures. Uh, send one of them to Bill. It uh, is via email. really, really cold out here. He won't know the. He won't know the difference. He won't know the difference, right? Oh my gosh! It looks like someone came in here and just wrecked everything, including the fishing gear. <sighs> so much for catching a two-foot Northern Pike. Actually, I think I can, um, find evidence hmm. here. Left behind by whoever trashed this place, maybe? 202-555-7237. That's a U.S. phone number. And that's it. Yeah, the culprit just left behind, uh, th their calling card. Almost literally. I almost it froze Nancy really, to death really by walking. It is really, really cold out here. I can't believe it. Side quickly. Ah, much better. I was, somebody left me a note. Ooh. Nancy Drew. Leave the lodge now! Nancy, I really like playing snowball fights with you, but I'm afraid you won't want to play with me anymore. If you play with me and you win, I'll show you my top secret way for hiding outside. Guess what? It's just... It, it's just warm packs. Heat packs? They keep her hands warm. So, Ollie! You check out Skookum Ridge? Yep, no avalanche. There's your snowmobile key. You make a report to the avalanche patrol? Oops. Oops, I forgot. That's okay, I'll call him. What else do you want? Well, this time he'll call them, but not last time. Someone went into the ice fishing shack and ruined all of Bill Kessler's equipment. Probably some animal-loving eco-fanatic who figured it was time to save the fish. So much for trying to catch a bigger fish than Mr. Kessler. Say no more. There's my tackle box. It's all yours. Kessler tried to rope me into competing with him. But I can't very well do that when you've got my hook and line now, can I? No, I don't suppose you can. What else do you want? Thanks, Ollie. I'll let you get back to work. See you later. Yeah, so Ollie can throw his tackle box at you without moving his arms, which is cute. But he's like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want that fishing competition. Here, Nancy, you can do it. Hallelujah. I do not want to do that fishing stuff. Ho! By order of the snow princess, you shall not pass! Ollie's just being kind of a jerk here. I do like... <coughs> oh, oh, no, I missed. <coughs> So when has Nancy been fishing before? Uh, she didn't do it in Creature of Kapu Cave, that was the Hardy Boys. I guess she did it in Secret of the Old Clock. But that was 1930, so, I mean, that's a, that, that was a different Nancy Drew, you right? I am coming! Whatever you really call, just squeeze the toasty pack and you'll get a burst of heat. It only works when you're already cold, and you can only use one toasty pack at a time. Yeah, Ollie's now on the top of my suspect list because he might have trashed the 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 lake just so it he is would not really, have to really fish. cold out here. So we're going fishing now, a two foot northern pike. I don't know what northern pikes look like. Not what I need. So I'll just keep going. Nancy will know. That looks like a larger fish. Oh, 
There's no bait on this particular line. So just click to go up and down. I don't think that's the right fish. A sturgeon chewed right through my line. That is a sturgeon. Okay, thank you for explaining, Nancy. I look silly trying to explain it. Okay, so northern pike is a, a bluish fish. Like this, perhaps? Oh, darn. Sort of blue. Why are there landmines here? Right size, wrong fish. Rats, too small. Ah, we'll just keep going. Oh, almost. I thought I got it that time. Ah. Not what I need. Yeah, you blow up if you hit one of those, um, mines. I broke my line. I should probably save my game here. That way, Nancy isn't stuck inside this area, like, all night. Because it's getting kind of late. It's getting towards dinner time. Wrong again. It's okay, Nancy. Just keep trying. Just keep trying. So many fish. Is that a cowboy hat? Why? Because I think that's the fish we want. I snagged a sturgeon. Huh, there goes my line. Oh, almost. Just missed it. Wrong again. Doesn't quite measure up. What? That was a giant fish! How was that the wrong size? Okay, I'll move my hook to the center. Here we go. Oh no! I broke my line. <laughs> yeah, dinner is definitely, definitely, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get like a, I'm gonna get in trouble for not making dinner because I'm the chef. Close, but no cigar. There we go, down the bottom. There we go, a two-foot northern pike. No more fishing for me. We did it. I finished fishing. <gasps> Ow! Oh, my face! Oh my gosh, whoever threw that ice ball at me must have set off an explosion that shattered the ice. And my jacket's gone. No wonder I'm so cold. So there's the wolf pointing out a jacket. Thank you, wolf. Coat. I need to make it to shore by jumping from ice boat to ice boat and put on that coat before I freeze to death. So it looks like with this puzzle, whenever you jump in an area in a specific direction, the ice flow um, in that direction disappears. This is not good. How do I make the ice flows return? feels like a crazy random puzzle, doesn't it? Huh. I 
just need an ice flow to appear towards the the upper right corner of the screen because otherwise I'm trapped. No! There we go, that's good. But I can't, okay, let's see. I can't go there, let me see, jump here, jump there. And we still need one more, uh, we still need one more ice flow to reach the upper right hand corner. Yeah, this mini game challenge is not fair, it's just really, really awful, isn't it? But the rules are pretty consistent in that, you know, if I'm jumping in a diagonal, or if I'm jumping like, I'm going to jump up here, that's going to make this piece disappear. I just wish I knew what the rules were for making pieces disappear. I mean, making pieces reappear. All I want to do is lie down. It's kind of surprising they reused this, yeah, this puzzle for like two games in a row. It really wasn't that good, and in Kapu Cave, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, there we go. So now I just need to get to this upper right-hand corner without doing anything wrong, so I need to zigzag. Here we go, got it. So I just zigzag here. Just zigzag. I don't know whose this is or why that wolf left it here, but at least now I won't freeze to death. Ah, much better. I was really cold. There's a note in one of the pockets. Since I can't go back the way I came, maybe these tracks will lead me to shelter. to Avalanche Ridge. That's not a promising name, but now we know where the wolf is. The wolf is here on Avalanche Ridge. Avalanche Ridge. Ugh, not exactly reassuring. The snow's so deep, I'm sinking up to my knees. If I want to follow those tracks, I'm gonna need some snowshoes. Something tells me I shouldn't be making this much noise. Not when I'm walking in a place called Avalanche Ridge. So that's going to be a challenge. Nancy Ski needs tracks. to find Probably the yonies. snowshoes. I bet if I follow them, I'll wind up back at the lodge. Yeah, Nancy recovered very, very quickly from the near hypothermia. I can't stop shivering. I need to get in and out of the cold, like, soon. I'll try, Nancy. I just don't know where the entrance is. Is it to the left or the right? Let's go to the right. Warm again. Oh, I should have used a toasty pack. That would have made more sense. Okay. So what we need to do is call Chantal. Oh. I have to dial the phone number. I can't just, just click on the phone number here. Hello? Hi, Chantal. It's Nancy Drew. You know who's behind the accident? Not quite yet. Oh. Jeez, you just hired me. I think I'm onto something, but I desperately need snowshoes. Could you give me the combination to the lock on the display case so I could use the ones in there? I certainly can, but I'm not going to until you do something for me. Oh. Sure. I'm going to fax you a survey that Tino came up with. He says you're to fill most of it out by observing the people staying at the lodge, rather than just asking them the questions outright. He says that would put them on their guard. When it's all sailed out, Fax it to Tino. The results will help him come up with a profile that will help you to determine which of our guests is responsible for the accidents. Sounds good. Excellent. I'm faxing it to you even as we speak. In fact, it's done. So why don't you go get it right now? I'll wait. Great. I just hope the questions aren't too dumb. This is Tino Balducci we're talking about. They're Got ridiculous. it. Good. Now remember, when you're done filling it out, fax it directly to Tino. And he wants you to call him before you do so he can turn his machine on. 
About Tino, I'm not totally comfortable with the idea of consulting with him on this case. Why not? Two heads are always better than one, and I find him to be very knowledgeable and kind of charming. Why would- Oh, Chantal is just using this as an excuse to flirt with Tino. If I need any suggestions, I usually call people I, you know, trust. I insist that if and when you're stumped about something, you ask Tino to help you out. That's what I'm paying him for. You can trust him. He said that because of what happened on that train, he learned the error of his ways, and he's a better person for it, okay? Okay. Good. No, 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 no. I, I just don't, don't, don't like this. Like, Tino's getting paid, and I'm not... Did you know that some it. photos are missing from the display case in the lobby? Really? Last I looked, they were all there. I think. The caption for them says something like, Young and old have stayed at Icicle Creek Lodge. I can't remember what they were pictures of, and I sure don't know why they'd be missing. That bone trapper Dan found is missing from its case, too. First the accident, now someone's stealing from me? Nancy, you've got to find out what's going on there. If you don't, I'll never be able to convince my dad I'm not a loser. Ever. Oh, poor Chantal. Nothing else to report. One more thing. Ask Yanni if it would be alright if I used his name and picture on the Icicle Creek Lodge website. I mean, when I finally have a website, it would be great publicity, okay? Sure. Good. Talk to you soon. Well, Chantal, you could convince your dad you're not a loser by not being a loser. That would help. So we've got love letters for Elsa, the, the old the Looks old like babe. Elsa was having major boyfriend problems. She was having crazy boyfriend problems. What's this piece of paper? Chantal, this is my formal notice of resignation. Well, let's call Elsa and ask Please about her Please call me at 555-2383 uh, yeah. if you expect any delay with the check. Elsa. So 555-2383? Yeah, let's try calling her. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope, we can't call her. Okay, well then, never mind. Let's just do this. Okay, so I'm just going to look up the answers rather than doing this. But you do, uh, figuring out what side of the bed they get from, it's pretty simple. So, um, left? It's where their shoes are, based on the end of the, uh, end of the, the, uh, at the end of the day. Lou will do both at the start of the day. Sorry, they get out of bed at the start of the day. The hometown is on the computer, so it's this, it's Brea. What planet do they like most? Um, let's see, so Earth. Lou likes planet X. Um, Bill likes Mars. And Yanni loves Pluto. Hates paprika? Yes. Yes, and then no. I think I might have the paprika wrong. I can't send this yet. First, I have to call Tino and tell him to turn his machine on. I have to call all the people. Yeah, I have to learn about the accidents before I can call people about it. Oh, but I'm calling Tino. Calling Tino can be a pain. Let's see if this works. Hey, Nancy! I was wondering when your number there was gonna show up on caller ID. This is Tino Balducci. Remember me? From that last train to Blue Moon Canyon we went on? Yeah, I'm the one who helped you find that long lost treasure. I'm not sure helped is the right word, Mr. Balducci. Please, call me Tino. In fact, Tino, I'm a little surprised you're still in law enforcement. Considering some of the unethical, if not illegal, stunts you pulled back then. Hey, that's all behind me. Ancient history. Water under the bridge. So, looks like we're gonna be working together on this sabotage thing, huh? Looks like. So Chantel sent you my little survey, huh? What you think? Well, the questions were very... Ingenious? 
That's not quite the word I was going to use, but anyway, I did have one question. You wanted me to fill out the survey for everyone at the lodge but Ollie. Why is that? Because Ollie's an employee. Um, so? Nancy, in my experience, which, let's face it, is far vaster than yours, Gosh, employees don't jerk. do stuff that's going to endanger their jobs. And if these accidents force Chantel to shut down, Ollie'd be out of a job. Ergo, Ollie is not a suspect. No offense, but I think you're wrong. Oh, yeah? Well, tell me this, Miss Smarty Boots. How much is Chantel paying you? Huh? How much? Um, nothing. Well, she's paying me. So what's that tell you, huh? That you're ripping her off? Um, that you're a professional? That's right. I'm the professional here. So, we done with the survey? I sure am. Good girl. I'll just turn on my fax machine here. Okay, let her rip. We'll see if that works. Some people think I got the paprika wrong. It's possible I did. You messed up somewhere, Nancy. According to the survey you just sent me, uh, the only crime any of our suspects could have perpetrated is jaywalking. Do it over and call me before you fax it, okay? You bet. Anything else? It's still ridiculous that 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 E gets paid when I do. I think that'll do it. Always a pleasure. Do people really want to see me do the dinner, the the dinner challenge? Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's see. So I think Bill needs to say no. He doesn't like paprika. Okay, we've got two votes for uh for for dinner. Three votes for making dinner. Okay, I'll make dinner. Let's finish with the uh, Tino survey, though. Nancy, hey, you give that survey another shot? I sure did. Hang on. Okay, sock it to me. Nice work, Nancy. According to the survey, our perp is none other than our bird-watching champion snowshoer, Bill Kessler. But Bill Kessler likes to ice fish, Guadalupe Comillo is the one who likes to bird watch, Yanni Volkstaya is a champion skier, and Lou Talbot likes to snowshoe. Oh. So you're wrong on all counts, Tino. How did you come up with that survey anyway? I put it together using this profiling kit I saw advertised on the Detective Channel. It was supposed to be foolproof. You know, maybe I just need to look at the survey data from a different perspective or something. Yeah, maybe the answer's there after all, and I just gotta shuffle things around in order to see it. Oh, hey, uh, before I forget, Chantel said when you finished the survey, I was supposed to pass some numbers on you. Said it was the combination of something? Yes, to the display case. What is it? Seven, six, six, nine. Anything else I can do for you? That does it for now. You need help? Just give me a call. Sounds good. So 7669. I'll grab that. Hopefully dinner ends before 7. So it was... 7... 669. That did it. And we get the snowshoes. Okay, great. So hopefully I'm not too late for dinner. So for dinner, I am making uh, a salmon. Oh man, people like salmon. And then two salmon for this one. So the salmon is uh, easier to make than a salad. So that's why I'm trying to make the, the salmon first. Order up. This one is a salad with two eggs. How do I make the salad? I put down this stuff first. Two eggs. Then two yellow peppers. Then two tomatoes. And one spinach and one carrot. And two cucumbers and three croutons. One, two, and then one, two, three. Do I have to do anything special to like drown it inside their their mayo? Yep, 
Yeah, okay, I don't have to do anything anything special to get it drowned in that giant mayo sauce. Order up! So this one needs two salmon, and this, need, this needs one salmon, and this needs two salmon. So we've got five salmon that I need to cook. I might as well just start making these salads by just dumping all the, the, the lettuce there. One, two, one, two. Okay, uh, Freddy still needs a salad and egg and yellow peppers. And then three, one, two, three. Then tomato and two spinach. I bet, I bet her dad was the one who came up with this. This recipe. I'm in this order for her. Three carrots, four cucumbers. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And then three croutons. So please let that be it. Order up! Why did that salmon show up? That's just not fair. This one is two egg and three yellow peppers. Yeah, the cooking isn't so bad, it just takes forever. Uh, one tomato, one spinach, one anchovy. Tomato. That. Nah. Tomato, spinach, and anchovy. I'm looking at the wrong order. Tomato, anchovy, okay, two carrots, two cucumbers. Order up. Somehow Ollie knows when you get the order wrong. I don't know how he's able to see the salad, but whatever. Okay, one yellow pepper, one tomato, one spinach. Tomato. One spinach. Then it's gonna be one anchovy and two carrots. Then it's gonna be three cucumbers. And one crouton. I find it better to just check after every single ingredient. Just to be on the safe side. Order up! So, two egg, three yellow peppers. Two tomatoes and two spinach. Two carrots, one cucumber. And it's uh, three croutons. Okay. Whew. So what do we have? Oh, is Bill still snoring? He is still snoring. Lupe is not here. Um, I think we can call the number on the, the bird thing. Whatever that number was. It was in Nancy's phone numbers, right? Phone numbers thing? Run and grow free. So this was the number that the culprit left behind inside uh, inside the uh, fishing hut. You have reached Run and Grow Free, a non-profit organization dedicated to making sure that the wild animals of North America remain wild. No one can take your call at the moment because all of our volunteer staff is busy blocking access to California's wilderness areas in order to protect their cougar, bear, and condor populations. But if you leave your name and number after the beep, someone will eventually get back to you. Especially if you want to make a donation. Hi, I'm giving you money. Please, please call me back. So I think we're at the end of day one because it's too cold for me to go outside to go to the... To, uh, Avalanche if I Ridge. go outside now, I'll freeze. So let's just skip ahead to the next day of the game. 
I've no idea where all the other people are, because they're not in their rooms if you go to their rooms. So, yeah. What do you want? You messed with my rifle, didn't you? This I gotta hear. Excuse me? This fax just came for you. It's from the wacko left-wing wildlife gang that paid you to screw up my rifle so I'd miss that wolf. How dare you talk to me like that? I'm leaving this place right now. Good. You just got yourself an escort off the premises. That's sort of the reason why I called those people, so Guadalupe gets kicked out of this area. I, I'm just a lazy maid who doesn't want to clean rooms, so now I no longer have to clean her room. <laughs> and I've already got uh, three people saying, "Hey, hi, hi! You need to do breakfast." Okay, let's do breakfast. Let's bring, let's 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 bring the breakfast. But first, let's clear in everybody's rooms. Wow, everybody wakes up super early this morning. Wow, they, they all wake up. Early. Everybody uses the exact same amount of towels every single day. Okay, this was Guadalupe's room, and she's no I, longer I there. I can't go in there now. Oh, it says do not disturb. Okay, I can get away with not doing his laundry, right? Co one five 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 Mystico, and prepare to be amazed. Bum, bum. Call one five 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 Mystico and prepare to be amazed. Let's do that. One five 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 Mystico. I think we might actually need the uh, the Easter egg in order to call Mystico. Who dares disturb the oh, concentration of awesome. Mystico the Magnificent? Um, I'm sorry, this is Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew! I see your future clear as tape. I see a white wolf and a dark figure named Bruno. Bruno? But beware, Nancy Drew, the wolf will only lead to danger and intrigue. Cool, I mean, yes, Mystico. The Magnificent. Huh? You're supposed to say Mystico the Magnificent. Oh, right. Yes, Mystico the Magnificent. So, Nancy Drew, what secrets from the beyond do you seek? What should we... What, what do we want? Do we want a hint? A reason for being? Spice in my life? Something very special? Or to be hypnotized? What does Nancy want? Nancy thinks it's really cool she's going to be in danger and almost get attacked. Yep. Uh, spice? Some spice in my life? Ah, who do you think I am? A gun-toting thug, a washed-up actor, an antique stealer, a diamond thief, an old man, an art aficionado, a hillbilly, an art director, a whale lover, a flannel-wearing cuisinier, a sneeveling brat, a quack, a social climber, a flanner, a two-headed monster? You have incurred the wrath of Mystico from this moment forward. Bad luck shall creep behind you like a malevolent shadow. Mystico has spoken. Mystico is very angry and he thinks you have confused him for all of the culprits in uh, previous games. So those are all the all the culprits um, pretty much in that order. Not time for kitchen duty yet. Oh, yeah. Not time for kitchen duty yet. I'm not going outside now. It's too cold. I wake up too early. That's for me. What? What's this note from? Because that Neanderthal handyman, I've been forced to leave. You could talk to me if you want. Okay. Yeah, we can call her if we want. Do we want to? In any case, I'll skip ahead an hour so we can uh, make breakfast. Is that breakfast time? Breakfast, yep, it's breakfast time. 7 a.m. is breakfast time. Lots of people want to call Lupe. Okay, we'll call Lupe, but first, can I get some breakfast? So, oh man, French toast. How do I cook Canadian bacon? Just on there?
breakfast appears to be another very long cooking segment, although now we don't have Guadalupe's food to cook anymore. Okay, there we go. That's finally some of the Canadian bacon is done. I was wondering, it's like, does it not cook? So the omelette... So how do I make an omelette? Do I just dump this here? Okay, I dumped that there. Omelette's gonna be two bacon, two spinach. And then three green peppers. And then I just cook up the omelette on a plate. And I think that's it. I think that's how we're going to... I think that's how we make omelettes. Did I get rid of Lupe just so I wouldn't have to cook for her? Maybe? Maybe not. This next thing needs uh, one French toast and one bacon. So two bacon, two spinach. Cheese, one green pepper. Let's see, this is good for Lou. If you think I'm serving this, you're loco. What did I do wrong? Darn. I guess I'll just wait until the, uh, the omelette... Yeah, there we go, that's... Please let this be good. Order up! Yay! Okay, so three French toasts and two bacon for Yanni, that's good. The other order had three French toasts too, so that's... fantastic. Ah, it's trashed. So how many more French toast? Two French toast for this. One French toast for that. So two bacon for this. This is just kind of a, uh, a hassle to, to cook everything, so two bacon for both of those. Two bacon for all three of these middle items? Okay. There better be syrup on that French toast. Yes. Yeah, that toast uh, was totally burned. You could say the toast was toast. Order up! So an omelette with bacon, spinach, three bacon, three spinach, two cheese, one green pepper, and then two olive. This one wanted two bacon and one spinach. Green pepper, one olive. So cooking is not too bad in these games. If you think I'm serving this, you're loco. What did I do wrong? It's kind of tough when they do that. That happened to me way too much. Uh, where where he won't tell you what's wrong. Why can't you just serve the part of the meal that is correct and we're good? This ain't right. I'm angry and I don't like this anymore. Okay. Two bacon, two spinach, and three green pepper. Okay. I'll just try to make each one separately. Because apparently if I try to cook multiple things at the same time, I just can't do it. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I must have switched those plates around, maybe. This one needs... Okay, at least it's got the French toast and the bacon. Order up. And this has the last two uh, Canadian bacons. Okay, let's make the, the final two omelets. It's taking me seven hours, but I can do it. Okay, so two bacon, one spinach. And one green pepper and one olive. That's gonna be the left one. This is three bacon. This is three spinach. And then two cheese. Order up! After two cheese is one green pepper and two olives. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This, this cooking challenge isn't bad. Apparently, I'm just awful at it. There are certainly worse challenges in Nancy Drew games. Yeah, oh man. Okay, where's Avalanche Ridge? It was right here. Let's go for it. We did it. We are fantastic. So this is going to take us to a brand new location. So we have uh, the snowshoes. Just click on the snowshoes. I guess that means Nancy puts them on and she can go here. Yeah, the cooking challenge in Sea of Darkness was kind of a pain. I really liked the cooking in Mornings at Waverly Academy. That was nice. I kind of liked the cooking in, uh... Danger on Deception Island, although that's not much cooking. It's just grab ingredients and that makes you, uh... That, that's your sandwich. So, we've got the culprit. Uh, just confirming the culprit is definitely looking for Possible fossils and dinosaur scapula. bones. Take to lab for precise ID. Just confirming what we sort of figured out earlier. The culprit's definitely going after, uh... If I don't get warm soon, I may not make it. Those, those, um, fossils. Looks like some kind of house. Could someone be living there? Hello? Is anyone here? Hmm, doesn't sound like it. So this is six, five, one, and two. That's the code to the house. Six, five, one, and two. The house is warm, so we can stay here. So here we want to check out a couple of things. They're mostly puzzles. This indentation looks just like the one on that plaque in the lodge where that missing Rex bone used to be. So some of these things are uh, triggers for puzzles. That's a that's the trigger for a puzzle. Uh, let's see. Over here we want to check out the ooh a hand warmer. This thing. Wonder what this is. Looks like there's a phone number on it. I don't think that's actually one of the items. And then one of the items is a uh, a Geiger counter. Where is that Geiger counter? It's not here. I knew. I know. Last time I played the game, the the Geiger counter, I didn't find it anywhere, and that that was a problem. Let's see. There's another toasty pack. The Rest of My Life by Julius McQuaid. So this is a person who is, um... The person trained the wolf. He found the wolf, he adopted the wolf, and trained the wolf to So do, once I get her attention like by this. saying her name, I can give her commands. Ability to sort objects by scent. If she has an object in her mouth, she'll sniff... 
Then drop the object near another object that has the same scent. So the Geiger counter is under the cot. Pinevale Hospital. Hmm. Maybe I can use Isis and her incredible sense of smell to figure out who owns the notebook I found outside. All I have to do is get something from each of the people at the lodge, something that each of them has touched, then let Isis figure out which of their scents matches the scent on the notebook. Yeah, there she is. Isis, calm down. Isis, stay. Okay. So the wolf is actually kind of nice and will can do all sorts of things. Jump, like jump. Bark. Around. Isis. Jump. Bark. Around. Go. Jump. Bark. And around. Yay! So somebody trained the the uh the wolf, which is not a good idea. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see the uh, Geiger counter underneath underneath the cot yet, though. Let's see. Well, maybe the Geiger counter just doesn't appear yet. It seems strange, but let's go. We'll come back. Oh no. Another explosion. So we have to do the scent puzzle first. We'll do the scent puzzle right now. Might as well. Oh, this is going to be a bit of a pain, though. So we need the Rex Bone stuff. Yeah, I think my timing is a little off. Because to do the scent puzzle, I need everybody's um, washcloths. And in order to get that, I, I need to do my uh, maid job. And in order to do my maid job, oh no, I have to skip ahead a day, which means I probably have to make meals or I'll get in trouble for not making meals and such. Ah, warm again. Because I don't think I can go into anybody's rooms here. Yeah, okay, let's see. Yep, nobody's rooms has a, a, a towel for me to get. So let's switch ahead to tomorrow. Let's make it like six, six in the morning. Six in the morning, that's what I'm gonna do. So nobody's gonna eat tonight. Nobody's gonna eat tonight. They're all they're all just gonna be very sad people. Oh, I need to get my laundry though. I need to get the laundry bag. Get the laundry bag, and then I'll just get the towels for everyone. I don't know where all these people are. Like they're not downstairs and they're not in their rooms. They can't be outside hiding, can they? I think I'll keep one of these washcloths. Good, we have exactly- I, If I unlock the door and someone's inside, yikes! Well, Bill's asleep in his room. Okay, well that's good for him. I think with Yanni, maybe we could steal his. Does he have something that we can sneak in? Doesn't look like we can zoom in on his uh, workspace area. But I'm pretty sure we can. Oh, you're still here? What you need? Oh. I couldn't help but overhear the argument you and Ms. Camillo had. She messed up my rifle so I couldn't shoot that wolf, so I tossed her out. Told her to take her little crusade somewhere else. Do you think she was responsible for any of the other stuff that happened around here? Anybody who deliberately sabotaged a man's rifle is capable of anything. But at least now I know why I miss that wolf. And like I told her as I was giving her the bum's rush. Next time, I won't miss. I'll let you get back to work. See you later. I was hoping to steal one of his cloths, but apparently he's still here, so we cannot do that. Oh well. 
so let's skip ahead uh, to later today. This way, Nancy can. Uh, this way, Nancy can sneak outside and get the wolf to smell things. But I'm gonna get yelled at right now. Oh, I didn't get yelled at! Hooray, I survived! Woo! So normally what happens is Nancy gets yelled at for not cooking dinner, or not cooking lunch, and, and, and um, then she's forced to make the next meal. So let's put on the snowshoes. Oh, and I can get yelled at for not cleaning up people's bedrooms correctly? Ooh, yeah. I don't want to get, get yelled at for that. Either way, I avoided getting yelled at. The only reason I skipped things was because I wanted to skip ahead here. I wanted to skip ahead to this point and uh, do the, the smelling challenge. Let's see, I still don't see any Geiger counter anywhere, but, uh, Isis, you can smell this culprit's journal. And let's see, is it Yanni's? Looks like it's not Yanni's. Is it Lou's? The scents match, which means those notes belong to Lou Talbot. So... Lou Talbot is the guy who's been stealing things around, and I'm still not seeing a Geiger counter here. Geiger counter, Geiger counter... I don't know, I don't see it... Hmm. Well, maybe later! Oh, it's not Lou Talbot. It's it's Lulu, who is uh the one, <laughs> the one who who is the culprit. Oh my gosh, that would be terrible. Maybe we do have to call the number that's on that device we found. It could be. In any case, we are going to uh, confront Lou, and that should give us the Rex Bone. This way. I feel warmer already. Now what? Oh, and this is a thing. Lou Talbot, charged with trespassing, vandalism, and theft, found digging on private property, creating a piece of earth architecture, inspired by Maverick artist Poppy Dada, of keeping the dinosaur bones dug up in the process. Dinosaur bones? I have to wonder who put that note in, 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 the, in the envelope for Nancy to read. I bet it was Ollie. It must be Ollie. So Ollie just put the note in, didn't bother to read it. Ollie's like, Ugh, this note's from Tino. It's probably useless. But it seems strange that somebody would leave that note for, for Nancy and, uh, you know, not want to follow up on that themselves. What's up? So, okay, so we are going to confront him. Do you think I could have the Rex bone that you took from that plaque by the display case? Dude, what makes you think I took some bone from some plaque? I have a wolf that can prove it. Because it's probably a dinosaur bone, and I read about that incident in Montana, the one where you were caught digging up dinosaur bones. I wasn't digging up dinosaur bones. I was creating art. I don't think so. Of course, I could always call the police and see what they think. All right, here's the deal. There's a lot of people out there who collect stuff like fossils and dinosaur bones, okay? They pay big bucks for them. And it just so happens paleontology is kind of my thing, so yeah, I collect bones and I sell them. So when you saw those stools over there, you recognized them to be dinosaur bones and decided to try to unearth more. Except I haven't unearthed anything. I'm not the one who's been making things go boom out there. I mean... I may have found a couple of good specimens in a couple of craters, but I didn't make the craters, and I don't know who did. There. That's the key to the closet in my room. You want the bone from that plaque? 
Go ahead and take it. Okay, dude, excitement's over. Who's move? Lou. I find it crazy that Lou stole the one dinosaur bone, but none of the others. What's up? Well, good luck with the game. Happy trails. So, let's see. Like, these dinosaur bones he left alone, but that tiny Rex bone he just he just took. That's craziness. So, did he just give it? It's in my inventory now. The key to his room. It's in his closet. Okay. And yes, we're, we're going to call that phone number. Which one is his room? This one? Look at all these bones. Lou's been a busy guy. Yeah, he lies and says, Oh, I haven't unearthed anything. Look at all these bones he's found. Here's the one I'm looking for. The Rex bone that's missing from that plaque. Yes, and our friend Lupe is barely in this game, I've noticed. Where, where is Lupe? Well, she got kicked out. We can talk to her once or twice before she gets kicked out. Before she gets kicked out. We can call her here after she's been kicked out. So let's do that. Let's call Lupe. And let's also call the uh, number that was on the thing. Oh, no! Well, where's my notes that say what Lupe's phone number is? It's got to be like this one, right? No. So this is five 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 six seven six two five. So I got I got the uh, the first part now. Uh, I mean I got to I need to use the first part three three four five five five. It's not in my phone numbers though. Why is this not in my phone numbers? Three four three three four seven six two five. It doesn't remember. I have to remember all four of them. Oh, gosh. That's just kind of mean. It's like, remember this 10-digit phone number. We can't show it to you. You've reached the office of Dr. Nikki Sabatini, professor of geology at the University of Alberta, Camrose. The sound of the beep. No, no, disregard all that. I'm here. Who's this? My name is Nancy Drew. I'm staying at the Icicle Creek Lodge, and I recently came across some kind of device that had your phone number on it. Describe the device. Well, it has a spike on one end of it, and... Well, I'll be darned. Where did you say you found it? Well, actually, this... I mean, someone's uh, dog was using it as a chew toy. She must have found it outside somewhere. You know what it is? It's a geophone. Someone stole a whole crate of them from me when I was out on Skookum Ridge not too long ago. What's a geophone? If you stick it in the ground, a geophone will detect seismic waves and turn them into electrical signals, which are then transmitted to a computer so they can be recorded and eventually interpreted. It lets geologists like me make maps of mineral deposits and such without doing any digging. See, I was preparing to do a subsurface survey of the area using reflection seismology. I set up camp, stored all my equipment in a trailer, went into town for supplies, and when I came back, the trailer had been broken into and all my geophones were gone. I was going to be the first person to do a full geological survey of the Icicle Creek drainage and the ridges surrounding it. Got grant money and everything. The person who ripped off my equipment sure screwed that up for me. If I ever get my hands on him... Oh! You have no idea who it was? It was snowing, so there are no tracks. So I don't know if he came by car or snowmobile or on foot or what. I'm assuming it was a guy. Because he only took the geophones, so he must have known what they were and how to use them. And since not that many women are into explosives... Explosives? The seismic waves that geophones detect are man-made. You detonate something on the surface of the ground, and the concussion creates seismic waves which bounce off different geological features differently, depending on the impedance of the feature. The reflected waves are what the geophones detect and transmit. So, to put the geophones to use, you need to blow things up? Correct. 
That's interesting. So, if someone were looking for valuable mineral deposits, they might use geophones to do it? If someone had the technical expertise, yes. Although reflection seismology is more typically employed to locate deposits of hydrocarbons, like oil and gas. What types of mineral deposits are likely to be found around the Icicle Creek drainage? All kinds of deposits. Silver, lead, uranium, molybdenum. I love saying that word, molybdenum. I think that's why I became a geologist. Just so I'd have a reason to say molybdenum. Anyway, if you come across any more of my geophones, or anything that would indicate who stole them, please, please, please let me know. I will. Good. Alrighty. What do you know about dinosaur bones? Precious little, I'm afraid. I know it's possible to find good specimens in Alberta, particularly in your area. But beyond that, paleontology's not really my thing. And all my paleo pals are currently off digging in the dirt on the other side of the world. So I'm afraid I can't refer you to anyone either. Are dinosaur bones good for anything? Other than studying? If you're a scientist, no. But because they're obviously rare, a lot of people collect them. In fact, I understand there's a pretty big black market for them. Black market? You mean people pay money for dinosaur bones? People pay big money for them. Lots of money. Thank you for answering my questions. One more thing. All of my geophones were hardwired to transmit at 990 kilohertz. So if you find any kind of receiver tuned to that frequency, check it out. Because it could very well belong to the thief. Bye! Okay, let's see if we can find the piece of paper that Guadalupe left for us with her name on it. 213-3264. Let's see if that's correct. I don't know. I got it wrong. 213-3264. Let's try again. Phone calls are not supposed to be this difficult. 213-555-3264. 1-2-1... 1-2-1... 3264 Yay! We did it. Hello? Miss Camillo, hi, is Nancy Drew from Icicle Creek Lodge? Yes, hello! Is the wolf all right? Well, Ollie hasn't succeeded in shooting or trapping it yet, if that's what you mean. But I'm not going to tell you any more until you tell me who you really are. All right. I'm a member of Run and Grow Free. As you may or may not know, that's an organization dedicated to the protection of wild animals. I went to the lodge to make sure nothing happened to that wolf. See, we're trying desperately to arrange to have it captured and transported to a sanctuary. But so far, all the ones we've contacted are full. And unless and until we find a place for it, all we can do is try to protect it. Now tell me more about the contact you've had with the wolf. Well, the wolf has been... Yeah, the wolf has basically been trained. If I give her a command like go or bark or stay, she'll obey it. So, someone has trained her. That's very bad. It is? Wolves and humans simply do not mix. While wolves may appear to be similar to dogs, behaviors that have been bred out of dogs after thousands of years of domestication are still instinctive to wolves. Training a wolf to behave like a dog may mask those instincts, but it cannot eradicate them. For that reason, no matter how sociable the wolf may appear, instinct can at any moment rear its ugly head with devastating results for any humans involved and for the wolf. Especially for the wolf, who will have simply been doing what comes naturally. So why should avoid all contact with a wolf? Unfortunately, the damage has probably already been done, but you should certainly not initiate contact, and do not ever, ever give in to the temptation to feed the wolf. 
For one thing, a wolf's jaws are twice as powerful as a German shepherd's. And should your hand happen to get in its way when it tries to feed... I get the picture. For another thing, making the wolf dependent upon you for food would seal its doom. It sounds strange, Nancy, but the very best thing you can do for that wolf is nothing. Nothing. Yeah, we can do nothing. Well, I'll let you go. Thanks for calling. Oh, and from now on, call me Lupe. I think you've earned that right. Fantastic. So, now... Let's go back. So now that we've talked to everyone... Now that we talk to everyone. Why doesn't Nancy like automatically put on those snowshoes? That would be fantastic. So we've got the Rex Bone. That's going to give us another puzzle. It's gonna give us actually a long set of puzzles. So let's go. Run, 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 run. What about protecting the wolf from Ollie? We should, like, be able to talk to Ollie about the wolf, but I guess he doesn't want to hear it, so, yeah. Still no Geiger counter anywhere for me to get in this game. Hmm. So, the Rex Bone goes here. Can't pick that tile up yet. Ooh, and this is a tough puzzle. So what we want to do is move all the, uh the pieces into place and we want to uh I don't think we've even done the I'll trapper I'm supposed damn to use journal this yet. To start with. Okay, so we're gonna put the bird in column three. So I can rearrange these by continuing to drop the tile that falls out the bottom into one of the columns at the top. The question is, how should I rearrange them? Match the symbols and line them up in rows of three maybe? So now column one is finished. Hooray. So rabbit in column three. Fish in column two. Fish in column two. Okay, so I use this um, cat in three. Bird in two. Rabbit in two. Fish in three. So now I just do these two. Bingo! Solve that puzzle. Okay, yeah, that puzzle's kind of a, a terrible, terrible pain. <laughs> the lanterns in here are basically just rocks hung in cages. I wonder what makes the rocks glow like that. Looks like the map to some kind of maze. Yep, this is a the really wolf rough, me. rough maze. I wonder if she expects me to do something. So let's go uh, all the way here first. So this is another thing where it's like we've got a giant puzzle for each one of these things and the puzzle will just take forever. A moose, a wolf, a raccoon, and a pig. Next thing I have to do is get each of these panels open. So first we need to uh, we need to open up these panels, and then we need to get the three tokens inside. And this Next lets thing us I have into to do is get each uh, of these Trapper panels Dan's open. Needle. So I need to go to the left, I think. Go. This is an, an ore elevator instead of an elevator. It's an ore elevator. Okay. Let's 
So let's get that wolf to the elevator. Nope, wrong way. Uh, I went back, back to this area. Elevator. Uh, I mean, this was the uh, the control thing. So we want the wolf to go like this. So it's going to be forward, right, left, right, and it needs to jump over the hole. So forward, forward, right, right, left, left right, right, jump. Isis, forward, right, left, right, jump, go. And now the wolf is going to do this. It's kind of amazing. Yep, the wolf is just completely going to go. Wolf jumps over it and into the elevator. So let's go here, up, 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 forward, right. And I make the wolf pull this thing. So Wolf is going to pull this <laughs> and hold on to it for a very, very, very long time, like over an hour, as I go back to, to Icicle Creek Lodge. I just always thought it's very strange that the Wolf managed to hold on for so long. It's a very, very well-trained Wolf. Again, let's just check to make sure there's no... Nothing, nothing here. No Geiger counter for me to grab yet. That's just so strange. There should be a Geiger counter somewhere for me to grab. Oh, that's a diary. seeing it anywhere. Yeah, so next we're, we're supposed to have the sauna challenge, basically. Uh, and, uh, but we're doing this first. Yeah, so this is one of the games I'm not very familiar with, so that's why I'm, I'm getting a little stuck and not knowing what to do. Uh, that's why I'm playing on junior mode. Ah, much better. I was really cold. The wolf was pulling... Not this. Why am I in the bathroom? That's Nancy trying to do the Nancy Drew rap. That's very cute. Okay, so pulling the rope opens up this thing. Yay, it's the Fox and Geese tokens. Somebody says go into Guadalupe's room? There shouldn't be anything in Guadalupe's room. She's not here anymore. My What's jacket. this? I'm getting a definite feeling I'm not wanted here. Oh no! The culprit is mean to Nancy. This has never happened before, ever. So let me just check out the uh, task That's finished. list. Check. Been there, done that. Check. Oops. Haven't done that. Been there, done that. Haven't really called Chantal Oops. yet. Haven't done that. Are the sheriff? That's finished. That's finished. I don't want to do phone calls though. I don't need to do the introductory phone calls, right? Oh no, and nobody's here. Maybe we need to talk to Ollie. 
We'll see what Ollie and, uh... Lou Talbot's gone, in case you didn't know. Just up and left. Let's see what Ollie and, uh, Yanni have to say. Do you have any idea why? Probably sick of salmon. The good news is, you don't have to do the cooking anymore. I can handle it from here on out. Yay! Well, I better get back upstairs. If you need anything, just holler. Ollie, Ollie, oxen free! How can I help you? Chantal would like to use your name and picture on her website when she gets it up and running. Would that be okay? I'm sorry, but no. Oh, well, so much for that. Have you ever seen the wolf while you were out training? No, for which I'm very grateful. In my country, in Fredonia, it is said that the gaze of the wolf will make you go blind. Yeah, Nancy scared away half the guests. It's crazy. She scared away Lou and uh, Guadalupe. Really? They're creatures of infinite evil. And that is all I'm going to say on the matter. You're busy, so I'll let you go. It has been a pleasure. In my fictional home country of Fredonia, bad things happen when wolves are around. Well, let's see what else is on Nancy's task list. That's finished. That's finished. That's finished. That's finished. That's finished. That's finished. Been there, done that. Check. Been there, done that. Oops, haven't done that. Been there, done that. That's finished. Can't check that off yet. I can't do the Been cooking there, thing yet. That. Yeah, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, we're we're. I guess we just leave and hope that. Uh, Pick up the phone, Nancy. Uh oh. A clean guest is a happy guest, Nancy. Do the housekeeping now. I don't want to do the housekeeping. The housekeeping is a pain in my behind. Well, let's do housekeeping then. Who's the person who was mean to me? Who's the person who tattletailed on me? So is that it? Is that it for the housekeeping then? It doesn't look like I have to do any wash, uh, you know, washing. I should get rid of this laundry bag before I forget. Oh, oh apparently Nancy did all the laundry bags. Folding these seven loads of laundry. Laundry is so awful. So I need to get rid of this laundry bag. Okay, yeah, that's right. Laundry goes upstairs, not downstairs. Ah, much better. I was really cold. Hmm. So yeah, I'm not sure what exactly it is I am missing here. If it if it's the case we have to call Nancy, uh, call the sheriff and Chantal, then let's do that. I don't think I need to use an area code for for Chantal. Hi, Chantal. I finished that survey and faxed it to Tino. I know. I was a little disappointed to hear that it had failed to pinpoint the culprit, but Tino said he's still analyzing the data, whatever that means. I don't know anyway, what that means. what else is going on? I'd like to know more about the accidents. I asked Ollie, but he said you said he wasn't allowed to talk about them. I didn't mean he couldn't talk about them with you. Ugh. I'll give him a call. As for the accidents... The first thing that happened was the worst. The Farringdale family and Becky the cook all came down with food poisoning and had to be hospitalized. Somehow, the potato salad got contaminated, although Becky swears it wasn't because of anything she did. I cannot tell you how awful it was. All five people became violently ill at roughly the same time. But were they all in the same room? Of course not. They were spread out all over the lodge. Poor Elsa was cleaning for days. And the odor? This is gross. Oh, that my sounds so gross. Gosh. Anyway. Then Carl Jenkins slipped on the stairs outside and broke his leg. Then Lou Talbot's window was broken. Then Elsa the maid's tires were slashed. Then the phone wires were cut. And then... Oh, yeah. And then the Southwaits were almost overcome by fumes when gas started leaking into the sauna. So, who's suing you? No one yet, 
but my lawyers are afraid it's just a matter of time and are trying to figure out what preventative measures to take. Did you hear that Lou Talbot left the lodge? Yes. This is not good, Nancy. When he checked in, he indicated that he was going to stay much longer than this. Maybe his bed was too soft, or maybe it was the food. Oh, Nancy, it wasn't your cooking, was it? Actually, wow, he left because wow. I busted him for stealing dinosaur bones. Dinosaur bones? I know for a fact he took the one that was in the lobby. There was a dinosaur bone in the lobby? Trapper Dan referred to it as a Rex bone. And for all I know, Lou may still be around here, camping out while he looks for more bones. Well, make sure that what few guests I still have are well treated, okay, Nancy? And please get to the bottom of this thing soon, okay? Tino keeps calling me with all these cockamamie theories, and frankly, I'm starting to think the guy's a bit of a jerk. I better get back to work. Don't let me down, okay? Took her long enough to realize Tino's a jerk, I would say. It just took her long enough. Okay, so let's run around outside. La 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 la. I feel warmer already. I don't see any sauna notes yet. Oh my. Maybe I just need to go somewhere and come back. I mean, my cooking is fantastic. I don't know why. I don't know why. Why she's complaining about my fantastic cooking. We're just just kind of ignoring the blatant thievery going on at the lodge. Yeah, I think we are. Ah, warm again. Well, I don't know what we're supposed to do. Let's see if there's somebody around here to talk to. Yeah, I always hate it when you get to a moment like this in the Nancy Drew games where you want to talk to somebody nobody's here to talk to. Somebody's saying we should call the Farringdale family. Um, what's their phone number? I can't call these people if I don't know what their phone number is. Let's try three. You, you saw, there are no phone numbers here on the phone number thing. It's just the phone number thing is kind of useless here. Look it up on the computer. I'll see. Is Bill here yet? No. Oh, this is the fish. These are maid duties. These are the phone numbers. Contents deleted. Wonder why? Still need to do that. Can't check that off yet. Hmm. Still need to do that. Here we go, that. Okay, let's see. Hopefully those numbers were added to Nancy's thing. So the Farringdales. Oh, we could call Bill. Does that even help to call him here? No, that's not. He's not picking up. Hello? Hi, are you Mrs. Farringdale? Put your socks on in the car, okay? We're late! This better not be a sales call because I really don't have time. No, no, my name is Nancy Drew, and I'm calling from the Icicle Creek Lodge. You know, in Canada? After what happened to me and my family, I have no intention of going back there, ever. No matter how many freebies you throw in. I thought I made that clear. Put that cookie down and get in the car. I'm not really with the lodge. I just wondered if you could tell me what happened. The three of us had meatloaf, potato salad, and green beans for dinner one night. And by four the next morning, we were all sick as dogs and had to be taken to the hospital. We recovered quickly, thank goodness. But the minute we got out, we went straight to the airport. I will never set foot in that lodge again. 
The worst of it is, I made poor little Susie eat all of her potato salad that night. Eat it, I said. It's cold out. You need the carbs. Now she refuses to eat any kind of potatoes, even french fries. All our friends think she's a freak. And all our friends' mothers think I'm a freak for going to Canada for winter break instead of Disney World like everyone else. Turn that TV off. I have to go. Susie's got a soccer game, and I'm Snack Mom. Only I haven't been to the store yet. Maybe I can sneak out during halftime. Sure, just pull out the orange slices and no one will notice. Oh my gosh, the orange slices. Susie, get in the car! We have to go right now! Okay. Call Carl. Hello? Hi, is this Mr. Jenkins? Yeah, this is Carl. Nuts! I missed you! Well, my name is Nancy Drew. I heard that you had an accident at Icicle Creek Lodge and wondered if you could tell me a little more about it. Not much to tell. I... Ha! Take that, Captain Keen! I went there to do a little ice fishing, and I slipped going down some stairs and fractured my tibia in two places. Can't work. Can't go out. All I can do is sit around and play this stupid video game. Oh, no, you don't! Do you know why you slipped on those stairs? Yeah, they were covered with ice. I was lucky I didn't fracture my skull. Ah, yes, yes! Hey, look, I'm about four laser strikes away from ruling the Gargulian galaxy, so I gotta go, okay? You got any more questions? Check with the people at the lodge! Gotcha! Okay, and the final person we get to call are the Southwaits. I think these are the lovey-dovey couple. Hello? Hello? I've got it, sweetheart. Hi, is this Brenda and Derek Southwait? Yes, it is. Is this a solicitation? Honey, you're so suspicious. Only because you can be way too nice for your own good, darling. I'm not selling anything. I just want to ask you about your recent stay at Icicle Creek Lodge. You mean Gassicle Leak Lodge? Oh, very clever, sweetie. Gas was leaking from so many places while we were there, it's a wonder the place didn't blow sky high. I heard something about your almost being overcome by fumes in the sauna. Well, we had just gone ice skating, so we decided to warm up in the sauna. So we were sitting in there, and everything was fine, until both of us started feeling a little woozy. We started feeling a lot woozy. And the next thing we knew, that Russian skier came in. Actually, I think he was Slovakian. The point is, he told us he smelled gas and thought we should get out, so we did. Barely. By that point, the fumes were making us both ill, if you know what I mean. That poor skier. By the time he helped us get out of there, he was almost as green as we were. Awful experience. Horrible. And it was our honeymoon. Well, at least the owner had the decency to give us a full refund. Oops, the shuttle's here, sweetheart. We're off to Aspen. Kind of a second first honeymoon. Long story short, if you're thinking about going to Icicle Creek Lodge, don't. Well, I appreciate the advice. Have fun. Oh, we will. Bye. Bye. Well, they were nice. Uh, let's see if we can, in fact, call Elsa now. Seems like it would be a weird thing. We have to call everybody else before we can call Elsa. And pick me up a double double while oh, you're at it, okay? Looks like that's the case, though. Yo, what's up? Uh, is this Elsa Sibylhoff? Used to be. Now it's just Sybil. Sybil? Sybil. That's what I'm going to call myself when I audition for Canadian Idol. You're a singer? Rock star. At least I'm about to be. Who's this? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm calling from the Icicle Creek Lodge. I hear you had some tire problems while you were here. Oh, yeah, right. It was that wolf. I heard it howling all night, and the next morning I went outside, and it just ripped my tires apart, every single one of them. That place is jinxed. I had to quit. Working there was just plain dangerous. So, if you're trying to deny my unemployment claim, forget it. I had every right to leave that job. You quit because a wolf chewed up your tires? Well, that is a little freaky, don't you think? Besides, it wasn't just that. One guy fell down the stairs and broke his leg, his whole family got food poisoning, and now I hear they got bombs going off up there. It's just a bad place to work, you know? My unemployment claim is totally legit. Your tires getting all torn up like that didn't have something to do with L, did it? Uh, L? L, as in I'm going to sell your collection of troll dolls on eBay? <sighs> you found his stupid letters. Okay, so it was Larry. 
my insanely jealous ex-boyfriend. He got all crazed when I couldn't take time off to visit him and slashed my tires, the psycho. I blamed it on the wolf so I'd have a legitimate reason to quit and get on the pogey for a while. I just needed some time off and some cash, just enough to jumpstart my career, you know, because I got talent. I really do. <sighs> well, you're right. I shouldn't have lied like that. Look, I'll contact the unemployment office and tell them the truth, okay? Good idea. What happened to Larry? All I know is he's finally out of my life. Take it from me. Do not ever, ever, ever think for one second that having a jealous boyfriend is in any way, shape or form a good thing. Because it's not. It's the worst. Got that, Nanook? Uh, Nancy. In fact, I'm writing a song about it. It's called Slash Your Jealousy, Spare My Tires. Get it? Spare My Tires? I'll probably sing it on Canadian Idol. Hey, you want to hear it? Uh, no. In fact, I'd better get going. Good luck on the show, though, and thanks for the advice. Anytime. So, okay, we're done with that. Okay, so, um, maybe those are all those phone calls we have to make. I don't know if we have to call, call Chantal back about, uh, phone calls, you know. I hope we don't. In any case, I'm gonna be leaving here, and then I'm gonna come back. And then we'll see if Nancy's finally gotten the, uh, the letter. Will she finally get the letter, triggering the rest of the game? Let's see. Ah, much better. I was nope. really cold. Still haven't gotten the letter yet. That's finished. Okay, what else is on our to-do list? Oops, oops. Search haven't rooms. done that. I thought I already searched oops. rooms. Give haven't people done that. Been uh, there, paprika. done that. Check. Check. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. That's finished. Been there, done that. Been there, check. Wow, I've done a lot. That's finished. Okay. Been there, done that. So maybe there's something in one of the rooms. Check. 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 That's finished. Can't check. Oops. Haven't done that. Two missing pictures. Can't get that back. Can't check that off I yet. I guess we could still call the sheriff. Yeah. That's finished. Talk to Chantal. Yeah. So we're, we're running out of possibilities here. And Bill keeps not showing up. So I can't actually talk to Bill about anything. Let's uh, call the sheriff and search everybody's rooms. <laughs> Office. This is Mohican. Hi, this is Nancy Drew at the Icicle Creek Lodge. We met the other night when you were investigating the bunkhouse explosion. Oh, yeah, that uh, bright kid from the States. Uh, what do you need? Well, I found a melted clock face close to where the bunkhouse used to be, and I wondered if it could have been what triggered the explosion. You know, the timer? I found that clock face, too. Left it there because any fingerprints on it would have melted away along with everything else. And besides, Ollie Randall said all the room clocks at the lodge looked like that. Could have been one that was in the bunkhouse to begin with. Oh, right. You shouldn't go poking around on your own like that. There could still be explosives lying around. <laughs> Although, I hear it takes a pretty big bang to set off C4. C4? A plastic explosive. That's what blew up the bunkhouse. Lab result came in less than an hour ago. <laughs> Uh, okay. Did the lab results show anything else? Nope. Unfortunately, that bunkhouse wasn't particularly well made, so when it exploded, pretty much everything got melted into a blob or blown to smithereens or burned to a crisp. I'll let you get back to work. Goodbye. Been there, done that. Well, that was a dead end. Let's search rooms then. La 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 Huh, I wonder why that room is locked. Oh, that was the empty room, yeah. Let's see, Lou's room, this was Lou's room. Lou just left his stuff here because... I don't know why, actually. You think Lou would have not done that. 
Bill's room, I think. No, this is Yanni's room. Let's see. Nothing here yet. At one point, Bill has a, a random note in his room. Here it is. It's totally unfair, and I'm sick of putting up with things that aren't fair. It's his fault, her fault, their fault, I don't have what's rightfully mine. They're thieves, and it's an insult to say, to have what they stole from us waved around in our face. I wish I could throttle them. I want justice. Yeah, I'm angry and stuff. So is that what's been holding up the entire game? Uh, much that note? Is this from? Meet me in the sauna in the basement. I have some interesting information for you. A sauna sounds good to me. So, let's go to the sauna then. Hooray! Bill was gone from the entire place uh, while... <laughs> while he waited for Nancy to read that note. Hello? That's Anybody a here? Silly. These weren't here before. That birthmark below his eye looks very familiar. Yeah, so that's a very legit looking hey, letter. Not a trap at all. The doors Whew, I'm getting really, really hot. Not creepy or weird. I can turn on the cold water and cool this place off. Let's see. Uh this is just reminding me of the pipes puzzle from other Nancy Drew games. Uh mainly I'm the, running out of time. I've got to do something fast. I'm trying, Nancy. Calm down. Yeah, maybe reminding me. I don't get these pipes me. adjusted soon. I'm not gonna make it. Nancy, calm down. I'm I'm helping you out here. I don't have much time. I've got to get these pipes lined up now. Ah, oh, Nancy. Yes, there is a cheat hey, for this puzzle. Hey, is someone out there? The door's... Whew, I'm getting... Once I get all these pipes connected, I can turn on the cold water and cool this place off. Nancy, just take off your jacket. That that would help if you took off your jacket. So let's see, what was, uh, what was the solution I was going for? Like this? I can't take this heat much longer. There we go, that looks very good. I've got to get these pipes aligned before I pass out from the heat. I know, Nancy, I know. I don't have much top there. Yay, we did it! still be locked in, but at least I don't feel like a rotisserie chicken anymore. Nancy! Mr. Kessler? What are you doing down here? I came down here looking for Ollie, but then I heard all this noise and thought I'd better check it out. Door got stuck again, huh? Say, you look kind of bedraggled. Are you alright? I'm fine, and I'll be even better after you and I have a little talk. Yeah, that's me. When I was a kid, this place was practically my second home. My late grandmother, Tilly Wentworth, used to own it. Hmm. Was she the reason you wrote that letter I found crumpled up in your room? About two years ago, just before she died, my grandmother sold this place to Albert Moikwe without telling anyone in her family. From what I've heard about Moikwe, I'm pretty sure he bullied her into selling. I think he cheated her, and he cheated us, and that it's high time somebody- Taught him a lesson by, say, putting Icicle Creek Lodge out of business? I had nothing to do with that explosion, Lou's window, the food poisoning, the icy stairs, none of that stuff. You ask me, it's karma. The Moikwes are just getting what's coming to them. Since you used to spend so much time here, do you know if there's a way to get into Trapper Dan's needle? You know that pyramid thing on the table over there by the entrance to the dining room? If you fool around with it until nothing but pigs show on the outside, 
This compartment will open up, and inside will be this round so magnetic thing pigs. that used to be Trapper That's Dan's special need. master key. Just hold it up by the needle, and a hidden door will pop open. So, what's in the needle? Do you know? No. My bratty cousin Elwood told me it was filled with skeletons, and I never worked up the nerve to go in and see for myself. And maybe it was filled with skeletons. I mean, let's face it. Living all by himself way out here in the wild, winter after long, dark winter... Trapper Dan was probably stark raving bonkers. I better get going. Okie dokie. So he's just <coughs> he's just randomly telling us all these personal details about his life now. Thanks, Bill. Okay, well let's just get it to show all pigs. I'm really glad that now we can continue with the rest of the game. It's just kind of a rough trigger, um, I suppose. Although, it, you know, they, they it is, uh, what do you call it? At least, the, at least it was in Nancy's task list, so... The junior detective, uh, junior detectives won't get stuck, maybe? Wow, this is rough. Yay! Empty. If there was a special master key in here, it's gone now. Woohoo! Yeah, my bratty cousin said it was full of skeletons, and even though I'm an adult now, I'm still very scared of skeletons, so I don't want to look inside. Hello again! I opened up that pyramid like you told me, but there was nothing inside. There wasn't? Oh. Well, I'm afraid you're out of luck. There's no Seriously. other way to get into Trapper Dan's Needle? You know... Grand Matilli once told me that if you turn the top of the pyramid 45 degrees, then fill all the boxes on the outside with one kind of animal, then another kind of animal, until you do that for all four animals, she said if you do that, you'd find a journal in there written by Trapper Dan himself. Okay, so all the boxes... Okay, I need to tilt it and then turn all the boxes. Did you ever read it? I was a kid. What would I want to read some crazy old cooch journal for? I better get going. Okie dokie. Alright, let's do this. And now we have this puzzle. Okay, so everything... Let's make everything... Um, yeah, let's go with this. Let's go with the, the raccoons first. Just in this order. On, raccoon, you can do this. Oh no! Oh no! 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 That's that's not something we need. Yay! Okay, now wolves. So what's this? All three? Hmm. I think I've got it. So we've got to do these uh, these ones and then the corners. Yeah, so do like these two, these two, these two, and these two, and then the corners, and then the four middles. And that's how you're supposed to solve it. And we're trying to get these as pigs. All right. It looks like this, we might need to do the four, yeah, the outside ones. Yeah. So get the four outside ones, and then uh, four insides. The eight insides. Y you know what I mean, right? Maybe? I don't know. So here, one, two, three, four. Got it wrong. Oh, well. So we want... No, 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 no. I want to get all... All the mooses. I accidentally got all raccoons again. It's 
So this was the one that was sort of random, wasn't it? Ugh, well, that's not good. Well, this isn't, this isn't so bad. Okay, looks like I'll just get these four in the middle. Done. Daniel Weisnitz, better known as Trapper Dan, I'll bet. The first thing you need to do is crack my cipher below or just follow the moose, wolf, raccoon, and Mary. Looks like the rest is in some kind of code. Oh man, so this is going to take forever. Okay, so we need to do uh, fox Hello and geese. Again. Since Mr. Talbot isn't here, could I play a game of fox and geese with you? You bet. Have a seat. Here are the rules. The white pieces are the geese. The black piece is the fox. The goal of the geese is to corner the fox so he can't move, while the goal of the fox is to gobble up geese so that they can't corner him. The geese can only move forward along a line to the next point, either directly forwards, diagonally, or sideways. Same thing for the fox, except when he's next to a goose that has an empty spot directly behind it. He can jump over it. Gobble it up. Right. Gobble it up and remove it from the board. You just take turns and play until somebody wins and somebody loses. I'll be the fox. Ready? Would you mind if we use this little pig I found in place of the fox piece? Fine by me. So we need to win all three of these corners. One, two, and three, right? What are the three corners we need to do? I, I might have to check the book afterwards. I think there's one... Getting it on the left here is a for sure something we need to do. Let's try to get this monster, monster puzzle, uh, working. Yeah, this is an okay minigame, it just takes forever. I don't know, we'll, we'll see, yeah. So let's see. I feel like this is good. Somewhat. Yeah, here we go. I'm trying to get him trapped here in the corner. Yeah, here we go. Okay, I think I'm doing well. Getting him trapped in the corner. Great. Okay. So has anybody, anybody seen what's the one corner I don't need to do it on? I, I, I'll check the diary again. That's probably the easiest way to get the answer to that question. Hmm. I'm a little concerned about this. Okay, there we go. Yeah, here we go. I've got him trapped. Wait for him to move to the to bottom left. This could be good. Okay, here we go. Yes. Yes, he can't jump. Okay. So it's pig, moose, and raccoon. Everything but the wolf. Because the game is called White Wolf of Icicle Creek. We're all, all, all over the place with this slider puzzle. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh no! Oh no! What happened there? I thought we had him stopped. Oh, that was a terrible move. Oopsie doopsie. Oopsie doopsie. That was terrible. How am I going to get him back on the left-hand side again? He's never going to do that. Oh, no. That was just plain terrible on our part. Like, Bill, please don't do that to me. Yeah, oops, we almost had him for a second there, and then he just managed to escape. So that's why, that's why nobody likes this puzzle. Alright, let's see what we're, we're doing here. Oh! Okay, forget it, we're trying again. Okay, we start over? Let's try for raccoon then. Actually, the pig is the hardest one. Yeah, we want to go for pig. So six hours, six hours later, we'll be finished with this puzzle. So with the trying to get the pig one, it shouldn't be too tough. I say that as uh, just slowly move uh, pieces from the top to the bottom. That's probably the best way to go about it. So I'm basically going to move uh, these side pieces down, trying to flip the board upside down. That kind of helps. Let's see, I'll move that piece there. He's trying to jump to the left. So now I'm doing a totally different strategy. Oh, I've got to move that piece out of the way. Oh! What happens if I do if I put a piece here, he'll 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 jump it. So if I put a piece here. He'll jump it again. I'll try to stop this. Yeah, now he can do a sideways jump like this. So I've got to get... He's going to get one of those sideways pieces, no matter what. That was just terrible luck there. That's good. That's not as good. But now I'm getting more pieces here at the bottom. Whew! I'm slowly cutting off his, uh, uh, I guess, range here. That's what I'm doing now. So there's no way he can jump left and reach this area. So I'm slowly cutting off the places in the board that he can reach. So I'm going to try that again. I'm going to try moving this big block of uh, things to the right. But you've got to keep an eye out for angles, like this top angle. That's a tough one. He could have maybe jumped that top angle. Slider puzzles are the worst, yes. So now I'm gonna... Uh-oh. Move this slowly up. Just, just, just making him go up a little bit. I'm trying to get him up to that pig area.
So let's see, if I move this pig here... I mean, that pig, that, that goose. We're playing fox and geese, right? So move these up. This might actually work. And now he's sort of cooperating here, allowing himself to be trapped on the top. So now he can't go down here. Yeah, there we go. That's a good... That's a pretty good situation. So now I'm going to move these ones on the left. I'm going to move all of them up. Just moving that column up one. Trying to cut off his path of access. Hmm, that, that looks a little dangerous there. I was a little worried about moving that column up one, so... Instead of going for it, I just went back. Okay, now let's try. No, he... he it's just, hmm, okay, what if I move this column up once more? That looks good. So I'm moving the leftmost column up once. Sorry for ignoring everybody in the chat. I'm so sorry about this. I, I'm really trying to focus on this, this particular game. And you see, we've got this tough angle. If I move this one accidentally, it's game over. Well, it's not game over, it's just game restart, I suppose. Okay. We've almost got him cornered. Got it! You're pretty good! Well, would you look at that! His eyes turned red! That is some pig you got yourself there! It's some pig. Okay, if we start over. So let's go for raccoon this time. So again, I'll play it uh, sort of nice and slow. Being very careful to slowly move him away from where we don't want him. So we're moving him to the right-hand side of the board, so... I think that's got the left-hand side of the board pretty much closed off. Yep. Oh, if I move left there, he's gonna, he's gonna attack me. So let's move this down. Oh, he's gonna hit me here. Ah! Again, gonna attack me if I go there. Ooh. Okay, that piece can go in the corner then. That piece can go in the corner. I'll move this column down. Slightly, and then I'm gonna try to move this, uh, this, this row to the right one. Sort of in my way for me to do that, so... Yeah, there we go, okay. So now let's move this row to the right. Sort of forcing him over here to the, the raccoon area. Of course, now he's going down into the wolf area instead, which is not helpful. piece there. I move my pieces here like this. There we go. There we go. Perfect. So um, now, now it's trapped in the uh, raccoon area. This here. And you're done for. Ah, oh, you beat me. Another win, 
Another set of red eyes. I want to play again. Okay, yeah, we let's start play over. Again. Let's see. Yeah, let's move this here. Yeah, this time I'll just move these pieces over here. Yeah, Bill knows about those red eyes. Bill doesn't seem to care about the red eyes because Bill's just not a very caring person, I suppose. Uh-oh. Bill's going to try to jump me here. piece there. Oh, no! Why did I not see that move coming? I don't know. Maybe I'm just a terrible player at this game. There we go. I can move this column down one. Still kind of slowly um, preventing, uh, kind of slowly just moving Bill to the left. That's all. Yeah, this game is still winnable. Definitely still winnable. I think if you're playing on senior, uh, you know, if you're playing on senior detective mode, you get like, Four fewer pieces than on junior mode, so that lets you know, hey, we you can beat the game even if you lose uh, a couple of tokens. So let's go with this. Trying to get Bill over to the left. Um, trying to prevent Bill from going up. That's why I did there. Okay, great. I'm staying there. Hmm. Good. Great. So now I got Bill over out of this particular column just by blocking all of those spots. So this will be tough, but it's good. There's no way he can defeat me here. Mm, no jumps. No jumps he can make. So I need to get him over to the side and just move this. Brilliant. Oh, that wasn't so brilliant. Okay. Um, hmm. Why would Bill make that move? Okay, good. Guess I have to be extremely careful now. Uh, I don't have that many uh, spare pieces. So let's see, I want Bill to go up in this upper left corner. This is just the cruelest. Yeah. I still have this. I need I need Bill to move down here and then I'll move the these pieces left one. Yep, 
There we go. I move this piece here. Got it. Victory. Good job. Another win, another set of red eyes. Whew. So we got all the red eyes. Hooray. And we still need to do a, a bajillion other puzzles. Did Nancy add those puzzles to her task list? Some of them, yes. Check. Check. Been there, done that. That's finished. Been there, done that. Oops, haven't done that. Still need to do that. So let's get going. The one puzzle, as I recall, is rather simple. We need to set these doors to this. So it's blue, red, yellow, uh, and then green, blue, red. So blue, red, yellow, green, blue, red. Sorry. I've already forgotten. Green, blue, red was on the right hand side. <laughs> so, yeah, green, blue, red, and then the other side's going to be blue, red, white. Blue and then red. And this does something. It makes that rhinoceros, not rhinoceros, the raccoon's eyes, giving us the raccoon token. So in Yanni's room, I think there's supposed to be a moose head token. Unless I'm mistaken. We click on the moose's eye for the moose token. Something tells me this radio belongs to Yanni. And it's and a radio. So, why is he hiding it? The rhinoceros is the culprit, yes. There is no rhinoceros. So I have some of the tokens, and the last one can only be found by the likes of uh, it, Madame Curry with her uh, Geiger counter. Basically it's saying that you, you need some sort of radioactive... If I go outside now, I'll freeze. Nope. Gotta skip ahead to the next day. Yeah, the next, the next piece is radioactive. It just seems kind of unfair that the Geiger counter doesn't appear. It, why wasn't the Geiger counter there when we started? Seems a little strange to me. But that's just me. I was definitely doing things out of order, and... Uh, I guess not cleaning the rooms like I was supposed to, and that was my problem, so that's why I, I had such trouble with it, huh? Yeah, this is definitely a case where it's like, I'm not going to blame the game, I'm going to blame myself. And definitely that Geiger counter is good for counting Geigers. So how many Geigers do we have? Six Geiger. That's it. Put on the boots. Yeah, I, I know, the Geiger counter measures the level of radiation that an object produces. Find it. That looks like a Geiger counter. This measures radioactivity. I wonder if Isis found it outside somewhere or in here. Yeah, does the animation look, make it look like Nancy's walking on tippy toes? 
maybe she's just bouncing up and down because she's really, really happy to be solving the mystery. Oh, those are, those are very sneaky, sneaking, walking. Yeah, she's walking around very sneakily. That's why she's bouncing up and down. That's just the way sneaky spies work. Ah, warm again. All right, so let's go here. And the Geiger counter will work right here. <laughs> Perfect. So now that we have all the tokens, we can do endgame challenge. I don't really think Nancy should be carrying around radioactive things, but that's just me. Radioactive! Radioactive! Oh yes, one of the final puzzles is going to be um, uh, the wolf thing. Uh, getting the wolf to, to, to touch all of the levers. So I've got the solution to that puzzle written down right here. So, woo, woo, woo. almost here. We're almost here. I've got the 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 uh, yeah. The Wii version of the game is really really slow. It takes forever to go from screen to screen. The loading, like we would have to load one two three, load one two three, load one two three. But you can skip through dialogue. So that's I'm closing the Geiger counter. You can't skip through dialogue in, in the uh, in the Wii version, so that's I guess I guess that makes up for uh, that kind of makes up for it. The Wii version has some uh, a couple of the like the cooking is different. The cooking is different. Forward, left, left, paw, Isis. Forward, left, left, paw. Go. You also get to do the snowball fight by waving waving your Wiimote at the screen and trying to hit Freddy with snowballs. That was kind of cool. And uh, there's a whole new challenge for uh, the, the floats. When you're on the ice floats, you just kind of have to balance your Wiimote so it doesn't fall over. So this is going to be lifting up uh, that slider thing. Uh, that we'll, 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 we'll see at the end. Remember, we need to get all of them to show, so that's what we're doing. Uh, flipping these switches gets all of them to flow. So the Wii version was okay. Um, so the pig is... Forward. 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 Jump. Paw. Isis. Forward. 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 Jump. Paw. Go. I would say that, um, you know, the computer version of the game is the superior version. It's better than, than the Wii version. That's why I would say. I've played both of them, though, so, you know, if, if you want to see me play the Wii version, it's on my channel. Isis, it's just forward, amazing that right, the dog can forward, memorize jump, all of those left, commands so paw, quickly. Go. Isis just has the best memory.
Yeah, so you see those little, uh, those were little, uh, gates, the, the red ones, that are all open? That, I think that's what playing fox and geese did. Fox and geese, winning fox and geese, opened those gates. And let's go over here. Now we're gonna end game challenge it. Yeah, so for, uh, just in general, I believe, with the Wii version, you just aim your, your Wii remote around the screen, and that acted like your cursor. So if you point your, your, your remote to the right, then the, it, the cursor goes to the right. It's, it's basically a one-to-one. -one. The same animals Trapper Dan mentioned in his journal when it came to getting into his needle without the key. I'll bet that's what's behind this wall, a room below the needle. And with the four tokens, we can get inside. A black snowmobiling outfit, and it's missing a piece of material. I'd sure like to know who this belongs to. Yep, yep, yep. Ooh, so cool and spooky. You see Brea. This bag must belong to Lou. Oh my gosh, it's full of explosives. Lou is the one who's been making those craters. He lied to me. He has been looking for dinosaur bones. Nancy could have faked a game of fox and geese when Bill was gone and just pretended to be playing. That would be cheating. That wouldn't be fair. But, oh, that would have been so much faster. Hello? Is someone in here? Hello? Yanni! Nancy? Yanni? What are you doing here? I was skiing, but when I passed the needle, I saw that there was a door in it. A door which was open. So I took off my skis to look, and now I am here. What is this place? All I know is, I found a bag, Lou Talbot's bag, and it's full of explosives. Lou is the one who has been blowing up things? He is the bomber? He's been excavating dinosaur bones. He may be responsible for a lot of the other stuff that's been going on around here, too. You must stay here and guard the bag. I will ski back to the lodge very quickly and tell the handyman to call the authorities. Then I will return. You will be safe? Perhaps I should stay. No, no, you go. I'll be fine. I will hurry. Looks like Yanni dropped something. It's that thing he's always wearing on his arm. Hey, Yanni! You dropped something! Yanni? <sighs> It's that frequency from She's got earlier. She's got gloves and that snowmobiling suit Lou left behind. Wait a minute. What she just did means the scent on that glove and the scent on that thing Yanni dropped are the same. Which means a person who's been wearing that snowmobiling suit and blowing things up is Yanni. Geophone data... uranium? Oh my gosh, he set the timer. It looks like he's about to blow up the needle. Isis, we've got to get out of here, fast! I like how Nancy just explains all this stuff to us. Uh, apparently it was too difficult to figure out on our own that, oh my gosh, he's gonna blow us up. Just run! But yeah, poor- he's getting away. Poor Nancy is like, wait a minute, that guy was the culprit. Hmm, yeah. What in blazes happened here? Ollie, I need to borrow your snowmobile. I'll explain later. Well, I'm glad Isis made it out, and he's just gonna stare at us. Hi, Yanni. I mean, Ollie. So, Ollie, Yanni's the culprit. We should stop him. So, hopefully, this will go better than snowmobiling did earlier on in the game. Where? We have to chase. I like this music. I'm getting intense. I'm getting excited. I might have fallen asleep while playing Fox and Geese and making a thousand phone calls, but now I am excited. I am going to defeat Yanni. I'm going to chase after him for a long period of time. I want to always keep him in my sights. Almost like, like Nancy is chasing 
chasing, chasing, uh, you know, her, her husband after he stood her up on their wedding day, so he's not actually her husband. That's how intense she is. That's why she's always chasing him and keeping him in her sights. So I have to wonder how much of this background is, uh, randomly generated and how much of it is, uh, you know, drawn out in advance. Because I can't imagine they drew, like, a giant grid this large. One that you can snowmobile on for minutes at a time? Maybe there are some repeating parts to the grid. That, that, that's also possible. That's something video games do sometimes. Oh no! Oh jeez. He got out of my sight. But don't worry, he's back in my sight. Nancy, throw a snowball, throw a snowball at him. You're within throwing range, right? Hey, he just went through trees there. How did he go through trees? I'm not allowed to drive through trees. That's not very fair. We did it! Woohoo! <gasps> oh no! Oh, he slowed down on purpose so Nancy could catch up. Well, that's really nice of him. Thanks, Yanni. Lying there in the snow, defeated, Yanni owned up to everything. He tainted the potato salad with bad mayonnaise, he iced down the back stairs, he opened a gas valve in the sauna, he blew up the bunkhouse using the clock he took from Guadalupe's room, and he left those pictures of Bill Kessler from me in the sauna, although he swears the door got stuck by accident, in order to cast suspicion on someone else. He did all this because he wanted everyone to leave Icicle Creek Lodge. Why? Because it turns out that he was actually spying for the government of Fredonia, which had sent him to Canada to look for uranium. Apparently, his superiors hoped to secretly mine what he found and smuggle it back to Fredonia. What they planned to do with it then, even Yanni didn't know, but he insisted that he never meant to hurt anyone, and that he really was the best cross-country skier in the world. Unfortunately, he'll never get a chance to prove that now. Chantal has barely been off the phone since she got back to the lodge. It seems that Yanni's shenanigans made the nightly news, not just in Canada, but in the States. And as a result, people have been booking stays right and left, much to her delight. When I told her and Ollie how Isis had helped me, they were truly amazed. Hopefully, from now on, Ollie will think twice about pulling out his rifle every time he sees a varmint. As for Isis, Guadalupe called me that very night and told me she'd found a wolf sanctuary that could take her. I could tell from the way the volunteers from the sanctuary treated her when they came to get her that she'll be in good hands at her new home. But still, it's sad that through no fault of her own, she can never run free again. They said it's possible that she might someday be released back into the wild, but not very likely. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed anyway. Yay, Nancy defeated Yanni, and what did we get? Dear Detective for Great Sleuthing. I feel like that's just, eh, you beat the game. Isis is very nice, but oh my gosh, so Yanni was secretly a spy the whole time. Not a very good spy. He didn't mean when to hurt ben anyone suggested we head to with New Orleans his for a short bombs vacation. and his attacks. I thought it was a great idea. Uh, the I French Quarter, fantastic food, awesome music, friendly people. But all it took was one little side trip to check on a friend of Ned's, and suddenly, Everything got very strange. A recent death, a musty old mansion, a disturbingly odd curio shop, a garden where only secrets seemed to grow, and something as ancient as it was terrifying. Join me on my next adventure, Legend of the Crystal Skull. Okay, so that's going to be the next game in the series. So, so much for this one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, 
I hope you enjoyed it, even though I had a hard time uh, solving the puzzles and got stuck. Yeah, Lamont's Curio Shop is not that weird. Not that crazy.